Hello and welcome to Too Many Movies, the podcast where we discuss DVDs, Blu-rays, and even the occasional VHS tape. I'm your host, Hal, and with me here today, Danis, introduce yourself. Hey. Hey, that's my name. <laughs> I'm known on Letterboxd as the most infamous Bayformer stand. Most of the uh, positivity towards any of those are 100% cause for me, just just so everyone knows. And yeah, that's pretty much what I'm known for, really. <laughs> I mean, if you're proud of that, good for you. Yeah, oh, I, I definitely am. <laughs> I've made a huge impact on the site because of it. <laughs> When I was first on it, everyone hated them, but now I see people be like, you know what? Dark the Moon is pretty epic. <laughs> I'm proud of myself for that. <laughs> Look, someday the Bayformers episode will come. I don't know Not when. yet, Minion. Not yet, exactly. but it'll happen one day. T- took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, Danis, happy 4th of July, because yep. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping to get this episode out on the 4th of July, yeah. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um... <laughs> Because, well, we're talking about a couple of movies today. One of them is very special. The other yeah. one is uh, not. Uh, That's one way to put it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So why don't we just get what started? Is... Let, what you were going to say? I was going to say, what is the worst role in Emmerich's film? And hands down, <laughs> Independence Day Resurgence, directed by... You guessed it, Roland Emmerich. Yeah, but before we get to Resurgence, <laughs> let's take it back 20 years and talk about the OG. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the OG Independence Day. Uh, yep. Like we said, ni- from 96. Uh, uh, yep. A very famous movie, I would say. Mm-hmm. It's very from... famous. I think it made almost a billion dollars. Yeah, I right. actually looked that up recently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the box office versus budget of... I, w- I looked up box office versus budget for both movies. Um, yeah. With Independence and can I just Day. talk about the second one for a minute? Like, uh, I know we're not on it right now. Yeah, okay, real quick. But I heard the second one is, uh, like, one of the biggest box office uh, uh, bombs of, uh, what was it, 2016 or something? Probably. I can believe yeah, that. Yeah, which is kind of hilarious considering this one made, like, a billion dollars or something. Well, so... Like I was saying, I looked it up, and of at the time, it had a budget of seventy five million, and then grossed eight hundred and seventeen million, something like that. So not quite a billion, but, but maybe for inflation, maybe it did yeah, reach a billion. It was close. Yeah, it was clo- close. Enough. It still made an an obscene amount of money. Yeah, I um, think it, it might be as big as film, but like budget. Oh yeah, not budget wise, but you know. No, not budget wise, but def- it's yeah, definitely, definitely not budget. But, definitely his biggest yeah. success, I would say. Because... Yeah, that's what I meant. My bad. Yeah, no, no, but I, I know what you're saying. I mean, it's it is his most popular film on Letterboxd. Um, mm-hmm. like that means anything, but fr- basically <laughs> on all fronts, I would say Independence Day is Roland Emmerich's baby. I would say, you know, it's yeah, it, it, it's it's basically as good as a film directed by Roland Emmerich could get. Uh, for better and for worse, everyone associates him with pretty yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I love this film. I'm just going to come so right out and say it. I love it a lot. I yeah. obviously it's not like a an amazing film that does it's have problems. It's not a problems. masterpiece. No. I hate saying that, but it's true. It's true. But it is a corny <laughs> action flick from the 90s. Um yeah. but that's why I love it. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a very It's very 90s. It's I'd very say. very it's very 90s. Um yeah. very 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 90s. For one <laughs> it's thing, like a t- for yeah. one thing, it stars Will Smith, um, which was kind of a which is kind of a huge. I mean, nowadays you could probably yeah. put Will Smith in a movie and it would be a success. But yeah. back in the '90s, it was like a monster success. Yeah. If he was starting to get there. like famous, I'm pretty sure, because he did Bad Boys. I think the year before. Yeah, Bad Boys was. The and year they before. did Men in Black, and yeah. then I heard he was in what was it, Wild Wild West or something. Well, that was his first blunder like big big blunder oh, really? was wild, wild i haven't West. seen it before but i've definitely heard a few things about it I, i've heard it's bad i've seen the nostalgic well, yeah. review <laughs> on it obviously but um yeah. but other than that yeah no but this was back when will smith was popular in a good sense let's say yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah no you're absolutely right not not just the fact that will smith's in it the, the rest of the movie is just really cheesy and really 90s and the fact that it's very uh, it's it does it does things you don't often see anymore in a lot of movies yeah like for example there's like a ton of miniatures i looked it up actually i think this has the most miniatures put the film or something if i remember correctly no kidding most miniatures yeah because i know i guess you you look at the movie and 
Yes, a lot of these special effects. Yeah, yeah, there it, is some terrible CGI from memory. Well, actually, the CGI from rewatching it, mm-hmm. when it's obvious, sure, but I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's terrible. Yeah, I guess so. I just remember there was some like bad green screen here. We sure, and that can be yeah. attributed to the fact that it's the late '90s. Yeah. CGI is relatively new, mm-hmm. um, and so I'm willing to forgive it. Yeah. And so, and yes, there are still miniatures. So this is a movie where it's it's a combination of miniatures and CGI. So the miniatures yeah. are kind of the groundwork for the explosions. Yeah. And, and at then, least those still hold up, though. Yeah, you know. and then the and then they, you know, run it through the computers and add CGI effects yeah. later to enhance the scene. So it's it's yeah. both it's both kinds of special effects working together to make something that m- almost thirty years later look still looks impressive. Yeah. I'm still blown away by a lot of these yeah, special. They're effects. really good, especially yeah. the White House scene, dude. It's There's it, a reason why that's iconic. It's you know? so iconic. I'm a bigger <laughs> fan of the Empire State Building blowing up just because I'm a huge fan yeah. of the Empire State Building. But <laughs> still, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. The the White House yeah. blowing up is iconic. It's it's yeah. so iconic. It's it's. I don't want to say this is where the movie peaks, but it is. But that's not to say the rest of the movie is boring. But yeah, it exactly. it never quite reaches the heights of the White House, uh, Empire State Building, and the. Was it the Los Angeles Bank Tower uh, blowing up? But I, I, I still think the rest of the movie has enough going for it uh, in terms of it, it's because I remember I was watching the Nostalgia Critic on this video, on this movie and he was he's very anti this movie. He's not a big fan. Which, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. I don't, I don't think him. I've ever watched this a review of it, honestly. Okay, yeah, he. this was one I remember <laughs> early on when I first discovered Nostalgia Critic and I found out I was like, oh, he did a video on Independence Day. I love that movie. And then I watched it. I was I was furious. I was I was all just, what? How I could he not love it? it? I remember one of his reviews. What was it? The Hulk 2003 review. I actually liked that movie. Mm-hmm. And it pissed me off because the whole time he was like, it's boring. I'm like, okay, but can you please say more about it? Well, I know unrelated, but that, that one got to me. Sure. No, but I, and in fact, so I did rewatch his video on Independence Day and I did get I did get what he was saying Um, in that I don't necessarily disagree with the criticisms coming his way. There is a lot of stereotypes not offensive stereotypes but the typical characterizations you see in hollywood movies and he's right he's absolutely right a lot of these characters you don't remember independence day because of the characters that's why there's no main character it's an ensemble cast you could make the argument maybe jeff goldblum's main character maybe will smith's main character maybe bill pullman's the main character there's a lot of characters yeah there's a lot of characters and i can't really (laughs) distinguish one of them being the main i don't know their names for both movies though well that's the other thing too this one i remember more though i'll just say that much yeah i'm naming i'm saying their actors names it's president bill pullman and jeff goldblum i know these characters (laughs) i know they have character names but you just know them as jeff goldblum and will smith let's be real yeah yeah same uh yeah it's and it is very simplistic when it comes to i mean one of the first things you see in this movie is when they're at that uh they're, they're at that base that the the first people who hear the spaceship coming towards earth and one of the characters <laughs> is listening to the song it's the end of the world by rem oh yeah <laughs> and i'm sure emmerich put that in was just like i'm being very clever by putting this yeah. particular song in there a sense of irony <laughs> yeah exactly it's like okay i, I get it <laughs> that's the level of writing we're at here which I, you know, is not a terrible thing. It's, it's obvious. charming here. <laughs> exactly. Charming. And it, it could only happen in a 90s movie because yeah. if that was today, yeah, this I'd be a lot a more This is such a product critical. of the 90s, honestly. Yeah, it is very much, very much so. Yeah. We keep saying that, but it's true. It's true, though. <laughs> you you look at the way people are dressed. You look at the way people are. You, you see the fucking CRTVs and... <laughs> yeah. I remember one of my favorite negative reviews about this was like, shit, thank God aliens still use like Windows 95 or else Earth would be like <laughs> fucked or something. That's actually... I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the other thing too is the way the movie... The way the aliens get brought down in this movie is 
<laughs> Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith fly an alien spaceship into the mothership, and they <laughs> yeah. and they upload a virus to the move to the to the alien spaceship. It's like that is. <laughs> You could not write that now. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> you could write that in 96 when the internet was brand new. Yeah. Um, there was like that Y2K thing going on too. Well, yeah, uh, Y2K was, was a couple years yeah. away. I wasn't born then, but I've no. definitely heard of it. I was I was born in 98, so... But, <laughs> yeah. the, but I... So I don't remember Y2K, but I, yeah, I do remember the aftermath in that oh, nothing yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because why would well, it obviously, happen? obviously, yeah. Things would be a lot different if it did happen. Yeah, it did. It did happen. The, the robots took over, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's happening like uh, twenty years later. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, shit, where was I going <laughs> with that? <laughs> I don't even know. No, but no. Um, uh, You're talking about being very nineties, like yeah, you know, the charm is, and yeah. The fact that the fact that you could uh, that the the way they defeated the aliens was they uploaded a virus which yeah. i remember nostalgia critic brought it up how oh, oh. This, is, this is just like war of the worlds how in the original war of the worlds the aliens are brought down because of diseases and virus like it's funny you say that because i looked on trivia and apparently the script was like it was referenced as like war uh war of the worlds meets like pulp fiction or something like that i'm pretty sure pulp fiction yeah, in I'm the like, sense that, it, that. that there's in the sense that there's no main character and it's just an ensemble cast because that is the only connection. I can yeah, make I was Pulp gonna Fiction. say. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I mean, again, '96. Yeah, Pulp Fiction was the biggest thing in the in the mid. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, that's why they just said that. They're like, uh, you know, it's like this movie that made like you know that was famous. It's it's like if Independence Day came out now and people just be like, oh, this is just like Dune Part Two. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like across the Spider Verse. <laughs> it's just like across the Spider Verse because <laughs> it has characters. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, I Jeff can't. Jeff Goldblum has a Spidey sense. I can't argue with that. Yeah, that's another thing. That's that's something really stupid. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is the character. He's the character that every Roland Emmerich movie has, where it's the nerdy guy <laughs> who discovers the big thing happening before the government does. Yeah, and like I think in Day After Tomorrow, that was Jake Gyllenhaal, and Godzilla nineteen ninety eight, that was I'm pretty sure Matthew Broderick. Yeah, you know this this film's impact has you know I'm trying to think of the right word. <laughs> it's in his other films though, basically the influence from this film. Yeah, it's Moonfall. On his career. Moon, yeah, Moonfall, Moonfall has the Elon Musk dude, oh where he's <laughs> or the, the 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 fat guy with the nerd with the nerd glasses, and he's the one oh who's just God. like, what would Elon do? Yeah, he's the one who discovers that <laughs> oh the moon God. is falling. It's it's the same movie over and over again, <laughs> but it works in Independence Day because it was one it's of the first. Fresh. It was fresh at the time, and yeah. again, it's it, it's not a movie that's trying to be this serious melodrama. It's 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 it's, it's trying to be the schlocky B movie action film, but on a much higher budget because you get these insane miniatures and really good CGI for 1996. Yeah, so that is dumb. I get it. But it's also really funny looking back that you could write a movie like that. I don't know. It's charming. It, it's charming. Because I then actually they even like it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, I'm sure you could. It's definitely a cult classic. Yeah, again, I'm not trying to argue this film being good because of the things it does it does in, with regards to the stories and characters like that's not at all where Emmerich is focused at. He's focused at the spectacle, which for the time succeed. and even succeeds. nowadays. Yeah, it succeeds. It totally succeeds. I'm just saying the story and characters are not quite as bad as maybe some of his other stuff and some of the stuff that came 20 years after this. Movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. And we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, let me just go through my notes so that I can see what I wrote down. Yeah. Um, I have some trivia too. Yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, Judd Hirsch is in this movie and he's still alive, but he was an old man in 1996, two years before <laughs> I was born. That just fucks with me that he's uh, still damn, alive. Really? <laughs> yeah. At the time of recording, at the time of recording, yeah. <laughs> he's still alive. That would suck if like he like passes away like two days before. Oh my it's god. Like, that will suck. Yeah. <laughs> so <That will, laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's move on before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving <end>. forward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving forward. Um I really like the imagery of when the UFOs come down for the first oh, time. Yeah, when they st when they start 
going all over the world and they're yeah. entering in, into the atmosphere. And at mm-hmm. first you, you, you see it from the perspective because at first you do see the UFOs kind of leaving the mothership and flying all over the earth. But then you see from the, from our perspective down on the ground, you see them looking up and you just see these biblical clouds of these giant fucking clouds, <laughs> yeah. this bright light emitting. It's, it's like I said, it's very biblical. And then you yeah. see these gigantic circles <laughs> coming into the atmosphere. It's, yeah. it's insane. The, the exploration from the main characters too, finding out about these aliens and all of this and that it's all really interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The first, especially like that, uh, what was it? That ER scene where they open up the alien or whatever. That's, that shit's awesome. Yeah. That that's awesome. But yeah, no, the, the, <laughs> The countdown to the aliens coming in, kind of covering over the these the covering over the uh, big uh, land, national landmarks, and then eventually shooting down. Like the build up to that is actually a lot of fun because there's this mass hysteria element to it that's really interesting to see. You see how people are reacting to the aliens coming down, how the government's yeah. treating it. Um, I really love. I this is a small thing. I really love the scene when uh. Bill Pullman, President Bill Pullman is addressing the nation and he goes, if you feel the need to leave the city, do so in an orderly fashion. And then it immediately cuts to mass hysteria in New York City. It's great. It's great. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's little, but it but it works. It's very effective. Yeah. Speaking um, of Bill Pullman, that speech, though, that too. That was, oh, yeah. Iconic. Let's talk about the speech. Let's yeah. talk about the speech. <laughs> we Idiot. might as well. We might as well. No, I actually have a couple of notes on the speech. Um <laughs> It is our Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I, it's corny. It is corny because it's this just like, a, you know, it's it's the scene before the third act where everybody is down in the dumps. It's it's very formulaic, yeah. and that's when Bill Pullman do- delivers the speech. But it goes so hard. It goes it so goes incredibly so hard. hard. <laughs> just just having them it, because it's not a long speech. <laughs> But it is effective. It, it gets yeah. you hyped. It really gets me it hyped. It does. I'm just like, hell yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. It's yeah. Independence Day. And yeah. to make it even better, the random dude intensely saluting in the back, it's it's <laughs> every everything builds upon itself and it's perfect. It, it, yeah. it's corny, I admit it, but it's effective. I love I love the scene. There's a yeah. reason it's one of the most iconic film speeches. Oh, I agree. So I mean it's it you could you could pick it apart as being kind of cringe i don't care i think it's based yeah i haven't heard anyone say it's cringe but who knows? okay well you there's <laughs> got to be one person out there one, yeah, definitely. one one's just very sad them. no i agree i agree i haven't <laughs> seen it uh, i'm just saying in case there's one sad individual out maybe there, Mueller like, finds a cringe i don't know yeah maybe Mueller finds a cringe. <laughs> <laughs> well he's not american so maybe yeah <laughs> Um, it's poorly written American propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I talk? There, here's another small thing that I actually really like. There's that one scene when a Los Angeles uh, news anchor is is giving a is is giving a news story, and it says, uh, it, "It's basically the government is warning residents in Los Angeles County: do not." shoot do not aim your guns at, up at the aliens and cause an interstellar war because apparently people started shooting at the aliens we don't see it but just the I, just the idea of los angeles residents taking out their guns and shooting at uh, sh- shooting at the ufo <laughs> yeah. one that is absolutely something an american would do and two yeah. it's just so funny like and again it's a small thing that's off to the side you don't have to think about it but it's maybe it, it's a deleted scene it but it adds it adds a little character to the movie um yeah. very simplistically yeah. but it is like i said it's effective i don't know it yeah. the fact that the humor is not as upfront you're able to have these little bits of very very like little comedic moments yeah. without nowadays it'd be like meta yeah probably. they would they would they would call attention to it they'd actually show them shooting at it's like yeah we don't need that we can just have it as a background gag and it's still it, it's just as funny i i wonder if that's a deleted scene it has to be maybe i don't know apparently there's it has a, to be apparently there is an extended version of this movie that's like eight minutes i longer. think that was my first time watching this movie but i don't okay. remember it yeah no it was I... like four years ago i don't think i've ever seen the the 
extended version. I think I've only ever seen the thre- theatrical yeah, cut. Since for the last four, three or four years, I've been watching just a regular version, and it's been just fine as is. So. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, I looked up because I've I've never seen these scenes, but I looked it up. I looked up what the scenes are. I don't and, remember them, and, and I'm reading them, and I'm just like, okay, I can see why that was cut. I can see why that was cut. Yeah. I did need to know that. I didn't need to know that. It's like, okay, yeah. n- none of these would have would have added to the experience. So I can see. I watched it why like late at it. night. I'm pretty sure, and I remember like being like really long, or it felt pretty long. Yeah, like exactly. it kind of killed the pacing, and the pacing here, like regular. Is oh, the pacing good, is so. perfect. It, it's yeah. It's what an hour and fifty, hour and forty. Hold on, what does the DVD say? It says no, uh, not even. It's like two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> 145, 145 yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long movie, but honestly, I don't, I'm never bored while watching it. The sequel felt longer, honestly. <laughs> the sequel did. And the sequel is shorter, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's shorter by almost like half an hour. <laughs> oh, pretty telling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really do. I do. I guess we kind of talked about it a little bit, but let's talk about it a little more. The actual, the actual scene where the the cities blow up. I think, I think it is a perfectly executed action sequence in the movie, and it is exactly what it's the kind of scene that Roland Emmerich, I'm sure, was focused on while making this movie. Oh, definitely. That's why I say it's the peak of the movie because. <laughs> It's that's about as exciting as it gets. It is exciting during the climax, but it never reaches the same heights as when you see the Empire State Building blow up, the bank tower blow up, the White House blowing up. And then you just see these people running away from the explosions and it's futile. Yeah, <laughs> you, you see Harvey, a lot of iconic scenes, I feel like, though, you see like Harvey Firestein in the car and he just goes, oh, crap. And then just gets engulfed <laughs> in flames. It's like that's really those are your last words. Oh, crap. <laughs> Not holy fucking fuck shit. Fuck. <laughs> it's like, all right, it's PG-13. You could, you could. So I guess I kind of get it. But still, yeah. it's just so funny. Mm-hmm. And again, to bring in logic into this discussion, when the <laughs> when the plane is lift, when Air Force One is lifting off and like it's it's <laughs> it's flying away from the explosion and it just so happens to be away from the explosion even though even though that's not how an explosion would work it's like you would be engulfed in flames immediately yeah, they but... needed michael bay to work on this he yeah explosions. yeah exactly um and then <laughs> and then the titch and then the very famous fucking scene when vivica a fox and her son are running through the tunnel and the explosion is coming de- coming through very very slowly it's just oh like... yeah and then they go to the side, but they don't close the door because they're waiting for their stupid dog. It's like, oh, at least the dog's okay. Yeah, at least Bo- Boomer will live. Yes. <laughs> so again, it's for spectacle's sake. I get it. Yeah. it. It's supposed to be dumb. It's supposed to be yeah for for the sake of the spectacle, for the sake of you to go, wow, that's amazing. Rather it's than supposed just... to be a spectacle, and it like it's great at that. So, yeah, I don't know. very I'll much so. For that. <laughs> yeah, I th- I will say it is as dumb as the logic can get. It is a perfectly exciting sequence. Yeah, and I love it. Yeah, and even though the characters aren't deep, I would say they're at least like entertaining or something. So yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. They're not like boring, which we'll get to probably. No, exactly. You know what? That's a good point. Is the acting great in this film? Uh, kind of hit or miss, <laughs> but regardless Bye. it's entertaining yes nobody yeah. nobody seems bored while making this movie again we'll you know, like you know we'll get to that um yeah. yeah no nobody's bored while making this movie they all seem committed enough that they're giving whether a batshit performance like brent spiner or judd hirsch or they're giving just or they're actually naturally charming like will smith will smith yeah. love him or hate him <laughs> He can be a good actor sometimes. Sometimes. Not in King Richard, but in something like this, where he actually does act. Oh my god, I was going to watch King Richard back when the whole slap thing happened. I, yeah. I never got to. No, I, wa- I watched it. I can't remember oh. if I watched it before or after the slap. You know what? Well, I've heard it's really boring, and I just never got to watch it. Oh, it's Maybe I'll fu- watch it one day. Oh, it's horrible. It's it's horrible. I heard it's really like Oscar bait or something. It's so Oscar baity. I hate that movie, oh, King Richard. It's not <laughs> it's not good. It is one of the most manipulative. It is one of the most manipulative Oscar bait movies I have ever seen. Like it's that bad. Um, oh jeez. Actually, I might have watched it after the slap because I think I literally said in the review, "Wow, this movie kind of slaps." 
No, what? It, you know what? I don't. I don't want to spread misinformation. I want, let me. Let me just. Let me actually look up and see when I actually watched King Richard. Uh, King Richard. King Richard. It's a 2021 film, and it. Oh, I watched it pre-slap. Okay, because I watched it December seventh, 2021, and so I didn't actually watch. I didn't watch it because of the slap. I watched it because it was probably getting a lot of Oscar buzz. In which case, I watched it, and then the Oscars happened, the slap happened, and then Will won, and I'm just like, oh, what a shit show. Oh, here's what happened. Somebody must have said, wow, this review sucks, and I said, really? Because I think my review really slaps. Okay, now I see. Now I, now, now I see. Okay, I happened. am sorry. That's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What were you saying though? I was just talking about. I was trying to discover if I had watched King Richard pre or post slap, and I discovered oh. I I watched it pre slap. <laughs> it look pre slap. I still hated the movie. I in fact I have oh. my own, I hate. Oh the yeah. Movie. Yeah. So my my rea- my reaction to King Richard had nothing to do with the slap because well, <laughs> objectively speaking the slap was funny so I remember one of the funniest things it was how I uh found out about the slap originally someone like logged a movie again gave it five stars and they're like Will Smith I'm sorry please don't kill me and like their profile picture was just Will Smith slapping Chris <laughs> Rock it was the first time I've ever seen that yeah and I was in like school and like what? <laughs> I mean, say what you will about the slap. Nobody will ever forget about it. It was, it was, oh. ge- it was genuinely an iconic moment in Oscar's oh history. Like, Did you see like? Have you like checked like Will Smith's movies during that day? Because I saw like reviews on like every Will Smith movie that day, and they were all like about the slap. I mean, I made a slap joke like four or five months later when I watched this movie. <laughs> On Independence Day, I said, guys, it's okay. Will Smith didn't actually slap Chris Rock. He was just making an epic <laughs> reference to Independence Day yeah, when he slapped that. the alien. <laughs> Which, again, great scene. That 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 scene when he when he shoot when he gets the alien so he's being chased by the alien in the ship, and then he <laughs> he outsmarts the alien. He goes up to their ship, opens the hatch, and the alien's about to like uh I don't know, kill him, and he just punches him in the face and just goes, Welcome to Earth. It's like it's cheesy, yeah. but man, is it effective. And then he follows it up with putting in a cigar and just goes, now that's what I call a close encounter. Yeah. Again, great. I love that. I, the movie is having fun, but not cringe fun. I love fun. I love fun. <laughs> Controversial take. You can feel the fun from this movie, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, can we talk about Brent Spiner as the doctor? Sure. So I didn't know that was Brent Spiner as a kid, like because I watched this movie as a kid. Now I guess because I didn't watch Star Trek either, I didn't really grow up. I didn't watch this movie until like I think twenty twenty or like early twenty twenty. It was definitely not on Fourth of July. I think it was late twenty twenty, if I remember correctly, because mm-hmm. I was getting into films and I definitely heard of this. I just didn't see it at the time. Yeah. No. So Brent Spiner, who's very famous for playing Data on Star Trek: uh, The Next Generation, he is. <laughs> Yeah, he's this dignified robot character, and then in this movie, he plays the long-haired hippie scientist who's just like, "Hey, man, welcome <laughs> to Area Fifty One. It's it's a great contrast." Um, oh my God! Speak of Area Fifty One, can I please uh, give some trivia on that? Please give some trivia. So, uh, according to one of the writers, uh, Dean Devlin, right? Mm-hmm. The U.S. military they agreed to support the film by allowing the crew to work at a. Uh, military bases and whatnot mm-hmm. but once they found out about the area 51 references they withdraw their support they're like fuck that <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to be a part of it it's a fucking movie like who cares <laughs> like that, that's it's funny they supported transformers though and that's kind of like you know about aliens and whatnot yeah sure. it, it's a movie it's not saying oh <laughs> area 51 is real the government has aliens it's like no it's it's a fantasy movie they say yeah. roswell new mexico was the fucking was was like these aliens coming down for the first time it's like that's stupid it, it's <laughs> stupid but like you know and then you have and you have bill pullman just being like oh area 51 doesn't exist and the guy's just like um actually mr president <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous who cares <laughs> you know by them withdrawing their support for the movie that tells me that okay the government is 100 percent. the 100 well i'm pretty sure area 51 does exist objectively speaking <laughs> 
they, objectively. <laughs> they just haven't told us if there are actually aliens in there. But by doing that, there is 110% aliens underground. I'm sure presidents <laughs> since 96 have met aliens down there. Uh, that's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they must have. Yeah. There's objectively aliens down there. There's objectively 110, 110% <laughs> Mac and me aliens down there. Mac and me aliens it's, specifically. It's a fact, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. Either that or Nuki. I don't know. Whatever the, whatever lame aliens, because it's not it's not going to be the cool aliens. It's not going to be the aliens from here or Star Wars or Star Trek. No, it's going to be the lame aliens from Mac and it's me or Nuki. It's Jar Jar. I would love if Jar Jar was real. <laughs> I I'm would I would love if it, at some point, you know, Obama or Donald Trump <laughs> went down to Area 51 because they were president and they're just like they're like Mr. President, we have to let you meet the aliens and and they met and they met Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine like me like going to like um like a restaurant or something and you see like Jar Jar working there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's someday someday. You so want a coffee or you so <laughs> wants a soda? <laughs> <laughs> the ability to speak does not make you intelligent enough you know, to work at McDonald's. You know, if George did exist, though, Brian would feel validated, honestly. Mm, very true. Well, if, if, you know what? If, speaking of Brian, Howard the Duck is definitely down there. In Area 51. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, anyway. But in my opinion, that movie should be locked down in Area 51. But that's just <laughs> <me>. <laughs> so well, I remember years ago, it deserves to be there. Well, instead, it's in the collection because we oh already talked he's about gonna it. He's going to kill me once. He's going to be like, what the fuck? You're slandering Howard. He hates <laughs> Howard slander. <laughs> he hates. I know. He was on the episode. He was on the Howard episode. He's chill with me unless it's about Howard. When he, That's when he's like, what the fuck, Dana? <laughs> <laughs> he's fine with anything else I say except for that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> there's no Howard the Duck slander, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, speaking of Area 51 and Brent Spiner, yeah. so as you were saying earlier, the autopsy scene was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not they as... tried to recreate that in the second one, I think, but it's terrible. Yeah, they or did. They better. did. Um, sort of, but not really. Sort of, uh, but not really. You're right. But anyway, I wanted to bring that up because that scene when they when the alien tentacles kind of wrap around Brent Spiner and he's up against the, the window and he goes, release me, that is parodied in Muppets from Space. Which Muppets from oh Space, <laughs> even though I did watch Independence Day when I was very young, I probably mm -hmm. first watched it when I was like 9, 10, 11, around then. But I had been watching Muppets from Space for years. It had <laughs> never occurred to me until years later when I was an adult rewatching both Muppets from Space and Independence Day. I realized, oh, shit. Th that scene in Muppets from Space when Dr. <laughs> Neuter is up against the glass, he goes, release me. And then he just slides yeah. down. That is a reference to Independence Day. And I was like, holy really? shit. Independence Day and Muppets from somehow Space are I connected in somehow. Yeah, no. It's because it's funny because I actually grew up with Muppets from Space as well. And yeah. I, I never connected the two. Yeah, no, it's it's a bla it, looking back. It is a blatant reference. I get it, though, because <laughs> it's Muppets from Space. You want to parody the famous space movies from that time so oh of course yeah <laughs> um i'm pretty sure muppets from space had like i don't know if they had a phantom menace reference but they def they probably in the marketing made references to fucking like it did, star wars I, i'm not sure about that don't take my word on it. yeah i don't know i i i feel like yeah. i did some basic research and i can't remember i feel like it had something to do with star wars i just can't remember i mean there is that scene when they're when they when when, when gonzo <laughs> finds the cosmic knowledge fish and they're just like goodbye gonzo and may the fish be with you oh uh, okay <laughs> okay there was something yeah there was something i'm not crazy okay good yeah exactly but anyway i just i had to bring up that there's a muppet some space connection to independence day i had of course to. Oh, so in that scene, also within that scene, the fact that yeah. Brent Spiner gets choked to death, essentially, because remember, one of the characters goes up to Brent Spiner and f and feels a pulse, but doesn't. Now, in fairness, he doesn't say whether Brent Spiner's dead or not. He kind of just, yeah. I don't know. But the way they filmed it implied it looked like Brent Spiner died. Yeah, they were trying to imply that. I'm pretty Even sure. though the sequel happens, we'll get to that. But it's just it's <laughs> well, very weird. <laughs> Yeah. According to Dean Devlin, most of the scenes, or most of the dialogue and scenes with Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith are uh, improvised. I believe that. Just, yeah. They, they seem like actors who... Very natural dialogue. Yeah, because, you know, they're, they're actors who are very... They, they seem like they improvise a lot, because they, they have this weird yeah. charisma to them. Like, 
sometimes it can be a bit annoying, but <laughs> when done correctly, something like Jeff Goldblum, something in you know, like it's in Jurassic like me and Park. Josh. Sh- you know, Josh sure. can be annoying. But... Sure, it's just like you and Josh, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder what he's going to say about that. He's going to be like, I agree. He's like, nah, you love me, Danis. I'll be like, shut up. <laughs> Never talk to me ever again. <sighs> oh, you. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the climax. Uh, the actual climax. So the, the fucking speech has been said. Everybody's pumped. Everybody's hyped. We're going to go fight some fucking aliens. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Bill Pullman gets in the gets in the plane, which is a little ridiculous. But I mean, it's not <laughs> that ridiculous. He did say I used to. F- it could I- be much, much worse. Yeah, I was a I was a fighter pilot before I became president. It's like, OK, yeah, I believe that. So now and then he's going to like lead him in. I don't know. I never understood why Nostalgia Critic was just like, this is stupid. It's just like, I mean, it's corny, but. So was the rest of the movie. So, like, I, I don't really see how this is any different to point out. There's a reason why I barely watch it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Again, look, look, that's a it's an extremely funny video, even if I don't agree with <laughs> okay. a lot of his. I'll take critiques, your word for it. <laughs> I look, I maybe I am biased because I'm the nostalgia critic guy, but I thought it was oh. a really funny video. There's that. Well, so, you're not the only one. I think well, Brian's into nostalgia critic as well. I, I'm sure a lot of people I know are into nostalgia yeah. critic somehow. I'm but, just not. I've watched some of his videos, but yeah. that's kind of it. Well, there's this one part. So the, you know. So I get, actually, this is before the speech. But let's go back a little. There's the scene yeah. when um, it's after the president's wife dies, and so then everybody's kind of sad. And then you see Jeff Goldblum kind of tear, tearing up the place. He's just throwing shit on the ground. He's just like, "We have to pollute the world, <laughs> so then they won't want the planet anymore." And then Judd Hirsch comes over to him and is just like, hey, man, calm down. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, he's like, you know, we all lose faith sometimes. And he says, I oh my sp- God. I haven't oh, spoken. It's funny you said it because I was going to bring this up, right? But him right there was kind of like me watching this movie last year, if you think about it. Yeah. yeah. But he was <laughs> yeah. saying, but he was saying, look, sometimes we all lose our faith. I haven't spoken to God since your mother died. <laughs> and in the Nostalgia Critic video, after he says that, <laughs> in his nost- Nostalgia Critic, in his Jeff Goldblum voice, goes, Mother is dead? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I almost spat out my drink. I thought that was the funniest fucking joke. <laughs> that just, sounds like a good one. Just, a, just imagining that in reality, it's just so funny. <laughs> but anyway, so back to the climax. You know, everybody's getting excited. They're about to, you know, it's actually a really exciting sequence, even though it is obviously CGI because you have all these fighter jet planes and alien spaceships fi- yeah. flying around shooting lasers. It is exciting. Um, and I do like. Russell, Randy Quaid's character, and how he ends up saving the day in the end. He makes the ultimate sacrifice um, because it leads to some really great lines where he's just like, all right, you alien assholes, and the words of my generation, up yours. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the classic, hello, boys, I'm back. <laughs> Love that scene. Fun fact about that scene, actually. So yeah. in the original cut of the movie, Randy mm-hmm. Quaid is flying his crop dusting plane, um, <laughs> which is dumb. I look that that's that's too far. I'll agree. Yeah. That is too far. That is that too, sounds so stupid. Just it imagine. is so <laughs> stupid. So they had to go back and reshoot some scenes to to like kind of plant the seeds that oh if I was it's too dumb for this movie. You know it's bad. <laughs> yeah, they had to plant some seeds to be like oh uh, he flew fighter jets in Vietnam, so he has some experience actually flying, <laughs> and so then. That's why when he's just like, uh, that's why they give him a chance to be on the plane, to be in a fighter jet plane. It's like, okay, he has some military experience. It's like, okay, fine, fine. You you covered it up just fine. So, but because they had to reshoot that scene, they had to reshoot the fact that uh, not a crop dust plane was going up into the spaceship. (laughs) They had to do a fighter jet plane. And so they didn't have time to recreate the explosion. They're like James Rolfe. They didn't have time. <laughs> yeah. So what they did, if and I, I've never been able to unsee this, actually. Um, so if you look, when the fighter jet plane goes up as Rainy Quaid flies up to blow up this alien spaceship, uh, they reused the explosion they used on the Empire State Building. Like, if you go, if you go and look, you can see it's upside down, obviously. But it's the exact same explosion they used for the Empire State Building. Like, it it's uncanny. I like, never noticed that. Actually. I know. I like what 
it's stuff like that's really clever though when they yeah. reuse stuff but yeah. it's not obvious or you, anything you I like wouldn't that. Be, you wouldn't be able to tell unless you were actually looking for it and now yeah. that i know that i can't unsee it but i know it still plenty of works. movies that like yeah wait not, you can go on no i've just not that was the end of my sentence it oh just okay <laughs> it's just say, i've seen plenty of movies that reuse scenes and it's like so obvious but yeah. like here I, I didn't notice it yeah it's it's great and By then, the way, a spoiler, it's one of the Bayformers movies. <laughs> <Just so you know. laughs> or actually, no, it might be at least the sequels. Yeah, all the sequels, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> they reuse stuff. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so. Come on, give them a chance. <laughs> yeah. I will say, what, one, one thing, I've always wondered if this is an intentional reference. So it's when Jeff yeah. Goldblum and Will Smith have already uploaded the virus into the mothership, and they're flying away. And so they're flying away, but the, the doors are kind of closing, so then they can't escape. And Jeff Goldblum goes, must go faster, must go faster. <laughs> and I'm wondering if that is an intentional nod to jurassic park it is actually i found i saw in the trivia that like he says it the same way to be like a reference to that okay that's true okay so it was you're intentional. not crazy <laughs> okay i'm not crazy <laughs> oh yeah this this movie one of the last notes i wrote is are also this movie makes two maybe three references to elvis so it's truly the most american film ever made <laughs> elvis <laughs> Look, it's a fun movie. It's a fun action movie. If you're not into fun, cheesy action 90s movies, and I do mean that, fun, cheesy action movies, not just... Look, there are still some pretty bad 90s action films. I'll give you that. Yeah. I've seen them. I feel like Brian would hate this, honestly. Like, I could just tell. Who? Brian. Oh. <laughs> he would so hate it. Because well, but... he has this thing for 90s movies. He hates them. Like, he hates Men in Black. And then, like, he also hates Mario Kart 64, also from the 90s, you know? Well, listen. I don't know why. He just hates these things. He listen, thinks they're Asian. Listen, Brian's Canadian. Yeah. What does he know? <laughs> That's true, yeah. We're Americans. We love these uh, American propaganda. <laughs> Canada isn't real. <laughs> Canada is not real. <laughs> Look, Independence Day is an example of how to do cheesy 90s action correctly. Because guess what? Two years later, Roland Emmerich made Godzilla 98, and that blows chunks. <laughs> Cause, yo! I was gonna say something, but just hearing Godzilla 1998 brought, like, a smile to me, honestly. Yeah. I love that movie. I... It is terrible. Yeah. It's terrible, but I actually kind of like it in some ways. I, I mean, there is a lot of fish, so... Yeah. And, like, the influence from this film, it is so obvious in Godzilla 1998. Oh, because yeah. Because I'm pretty sure they got Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin because of this film. Yeah, probably. I'm like 99% sure of that. Yeah. Probably, yeah. That that makes sense. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> every Emmerich film I've seen after Independence Day feels like Independence Day. At least the ones that... like oh, obviously on, not the Patriot. I have not seen the Patriot, <laughs> to be fair. I have not seen uh, The Day After Tomorrow. Um, and I won't say... No, right. I won't say this is like 10,000 BC. Oh, uh, <sighs> But movie. stuff like stuff like 2012, like Moonfall, the the <laughs> connections to Independence Day are staggeringly high. Yeah, it 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 follows the those movies follow the Independence Day formula to a T, and they are worse <laughs> because of it. Um, yeah, it doesn't I, feel fresh. It just feels no. very recycled. Yeah, I loved 2012 as a kid because I thought it was really cool when the I buildings like fell. I remember liking the movie too, actually. But well, again, it's been because I thought it was I thought it was scary as a kid because I watched <laughs> it. I was just like, oh, is the world actually going to end in 2012? <laughs> it's like, no, fucking dumbass. Oh, they they just ran out of that. rock. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. Um, and then Moonfall is just stupid. Because, oh my god, Moonfall but, actually broke me. Or not broke me, well, like it ruined my brain. Oh, Moonfall. Watching Moonfall was one of the best oh theater god. experiences because it was... It I was, think my was just complete mush. Like, it yeah. was destroyed after I, seeing that movie. No, dude. I had no brain cells whatsoever. Dude, I know exactly the feeling you're talking about because yeah. I watched Moonfall. Well, like, it was it great. Genuinely hurt. My brain actually hurt, but I kind of liked it, but also, like... <laughs> <laughs> it was great because I watched it in a theater on opening oh, night. Yeah. One of the big theaters. Like, one of the big... Oh yeah, theaters Same in, with in the my dad, actually. Even my dad was like, "That movie was kind of stupid." Yeah, I watched <laughs> it in a big Elon theater Musk and everything. <laughs> and I was one of three people in that theater. It was oh my great. god, same. We saw it like not opening week, but like the week after or yeah. something. It was like 
no, barely anyone. I, I saw it Friday evening, opening night, and I was one of three people. It was hilarious. And then, yeah, we get to the reveal and, and later in the movie when the moon oh is God. not the moon at all. And oh, it was, oh it, was des- it was designed by aliens who are also our ancestors. Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, oh, baby, Emmerich, you're so back, baby. <laughs> We are so back. I fucking love that movie. Um, I know of a certain someone that said they almost yelled in the theater it's, because of that movie. It's it's bad. It's not it's not as fun as Independence Day because under, Independence Day is genuinely fun. Whereas Moonfall, yeah. you can it's make so fun bad of it. Good, it's so bad it's good. I I would rather rewatch Moonfall over the next movie we're going to be talking yeah, about. I, I know some people, I think on most sites, they say Moonfall is his worst film, but no, I don't agree with that. No, 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 no. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not, yeah. I'd say it's at least better than Godzilla 1998. Personally. I would probably assume, I would probably agree with that. I think I have 98 <laughs> rated higher, but like, I don't remember It was like, a, it's at a five, movie. I'm pretty sure. I remember that. Yeah, it's... Yeah. I had it at a five, too, and then I rewatched I'm like, ah, uh, it's, it's like a three. I'm pretty... Yeah, I'd probably give it a three. And I don't I need to tell it. you why. Why is it so low, you know? Well, because it's bad. <laughs> it's, it's fucking yeah. Godzilla 98. Does that look like something Toho would approve? Yeah. No! <laughs> It looks like something Matt Groening would approve because there's so many Simpsons <laughs> actors in it. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised Brian didn't love it because, you know, there's like a bunch of Simpsons actors in that I'm movie. surprised I didn't love it. I'm the Simpsons <laughs> yeah. guy. Maybe you'll like it more. Maybe it'll be like a seven with heart, you know, on rewatch. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we, gotta have a re- we gotta have a watch party of that movie. Someday. Someday. I was going to watch it for its uh, 26th anniversary, but I was like busy that day. So yeah. unfortunately, I could not rewatch the classic. Mm. Godzilla 1998. <laughs> That's fine. Did, did, you know what? It's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, I oh I own like two or three different copies of it. I think I own it on like 4K. Yeah. I own it on digital. I think the 4K has like a Blu-ray in it, and I also own it on DVD. So I own like yeah, I don't know, a bunch of copies of it. <laughs> I used to own it on DVD because I found it. And I thought the DVD looked really cool because it was it was one of those late <laughs> 90s DVDs where it was oh, yeah. just like animated menus. You're just like, whoa, slow down there, Buckaroo. Yeah. Animated menus. Hold on. Like, yeah. this is awesome. That's also That movie is also very 90s in fairness. Yeah. But for all the worst reasons why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get you get the Siskel and Ebert cameo, but you don't oh. do anything with them. <laughs> Actually, I say cameo more like reference because that's not yeah. Cisco and Ebert. <laughs> yeah, they put them in that movie because I think they didn't like, or they were kind of like meh on uh, Independence Day. Yeah. I think there are other films too. Yeah. I think Ebert hated Stargate and maybe Universal so- Soldier, hmm. but with Independence Day, he was like, it's meh or it's all right. He gave it like two and a half, I'm pretty sure. Which, hey, nothing, nothing that, bad. That's not great, but you know. I mean, then we meh. still agree with Ebert. Ebert still agrees with us. Independence Day is his best movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he gave godzilla 98 like one star <laughs> I, fair that's fair <laughs> he was like at least eat us if you're gonna include us you know I, yeah exactly Which, i kind of agree I, i'm gonna have to side with ebert and siskel on this one if you don't kill them off like <laughs> what are you doing yeah so. um well i didn't have that much else to say about independence day can i talk about i have some DVD? trivia but it's not like super important go, go over I'll some trivia say. yeah please okay so that scene where Will Smith's like, what the hell is that smell? That was unscripted. Yeah, um, I, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Over 70 mock news broadcasts were created for the film. 70. Wow. That's actually a lot. Yeah. And they penned the script in uh, four weeks and filming was, they only, they only filmed for like uh, 72 days. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, 72 days. That's like what? Like three months, give or take. Yeah. It's about. It was about two and a half, three months. Yeah, it filmed like late July and it finished like early October or something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, but still, they <laughs> they penned the script in four weeks, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. I mean, hey, it's longer than they did for Black Widow. I heard that was like three days or something. No shot, three days, yeah. like a few days. Yeah, like not even oh. a week. I'm pretty sure. I think what was it? I I know I keep bringing up Bayformers when it's not about Bayformers. But I think Revenge of the Fallen was written like that was written during like a strike, right? You know, that was well, that was yeah, that was written during the writer's strike. Of yeah, I think that 09. was like three weeks or something. So while that's rush, 
they spent more time on that script than Black Widow, and I'm pretty sure Multiverse of Madness was even like a few days. Which no kidding. I know we have different opinions on that, but let's. I think we could agree the script wasn't like the best part. No, of course, <laughs> to no, say the least. No, of course, the script was the worst part of Multiverse oh, of yeah, Madness. Of course, I I agree yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just making sure because yeah. we have different opinions on that. Yeah, but also I watched it what two years ago, and I haven't thought yeah, about yeah, it yeah. since. It's like yeah, how I've good was it really? It. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm sure I'll rewatch it at some point. It's just Maybe. I've been too I'll just busy say, watching as other someone that's things. watched it twice that same year, it's it's infinitely worse on rewatch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just confirm to it right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, look, it's Phase Four Marvel. How good is it really? <laughs> oh my God! Speaking of Marvel, I remember after uh, Moonfall, Emmerich was like, uh, "God, these Marvel movies are killing cinema." While well, he like published Moonfall or something, yeah, it was so yeah, funny. Yeah, exactly. It's... Everyone gave him shit, but I'm like, no, let him cook. You know, I let mean, him look, cook. Moonfall is better. Look, he's right in the sense that Marvel has shifted how movies are made now. I agree, <laughs> but he is saying that having made <laughs> Moonfall, but also. Having made Independence Day 2, which I'm not ready to go into yet. And he's made a bunch of movies similar to Independence Day for like 20 or 30 years. But Independence (laughs) Day 2 feels like it was also made in the era when it Marvel feels like it's ai generated i know we're getting off topic but... right but uh, you know what yeah all right well before we get yeah. into independence day 2 mm-hmm. let's let me just talk about this dvd um okay i think it's funny actually i got this dvd version of independence day i think i ordered it through i think my grandma gave me this catalog and was just like hey you can order any dvds from here and i'm like okay and I saw Independence Day double feature DVD. I was like, huh. Oh. <laughs> but what it was is it was both discs, both both movies were in their own separate cases. They just came as a uh, two pack. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Isn't it like a slipcase or something? Or wait, no, I'm thinking of something else. Never mind. May, I don't know. Maybe you had a slipcase at one no, point. No, I get what you're saying. It has pl- like two different like trays or whatever. Well, no. So it's it's it, their own separate cases. Um. Um, so their own box. I kind of get it. Yeah. So is they, it like they were just shrink like really together. Slim cases. No. Or am I wrong no. Oh, okay. No. It, this quite literally could have been sold by itself, but they just sold oh, okay. the both together as like one product. Um, oh, okay. And so I got both movies. Now <laughs> I don't have Resurgence because I watched it once already. <laughs> four years ago and i'm and this hey, you was, got rid of it well this was before i was like hey you know i could make content out of getting rid of movies <laughs> so i just just like oh this sucks i gotta get this out of here because i don't want to watch this ever again <laughs> but i forgot it's like well i still now i have to rewatch it for the podcast because now i have a podcast <laughs> where i get rid of movies but anyway look i think i'm gonna keep this dvd because oh, of course yeah because I, well what? so here's the thing Regardless of whether I upgrade this eventually to 4K or Blu-ray, I'm going to keep the movie in general in the collection because I love Independence Day. It is a tradition I watch every year on the 4th of July. Even though I watched it earlier this year because I yeah. want to get the episode out. I was on wondering July. actually, are you going to rewatch it again for this Fourth of July? I think I've been I, wondering that too. I'd like to look. Last November, I watched Freebirds three times in the span of a week. <laughs> so like, I'm I, I'm not opposed to rewatching movies soon i remember like in the span of like june july last year i watched bay formers like each like oh like one through four like two or three times within like you know that time frame yeah so that's your brain I went crazy my brain yeah. rot is watching independence day so i feel better about myself <laughs> when compared to you <laughs> i'm kidding anyway Damn. i'm keeping independence day so do you own it physically at all I own, so it's funny, because I remember like years ago, I bought it on DVD, and it was really cheap, and I'm like, oh, okay, it was like $2 from eBay, Oh, that's, but the problem wow, was, that's it was like, it was full screen, that's the problem, oh, <laughs> and I made that dumb, ad, that kind of like taught me a lesson where I'm like, if it's too cheap, it's probably like full screen, or just like bad in general, Yeah. so then I bought like a second copy, they're both DVD, DVDs yeah. though. DVDs can be can still be good, I yeah. still own a bunch of DVDs, I, I love yeah. DVDs. As long as they're I, not made after 2010, although I say that, I'm pretty sure this Independence Day DVD is <laughs> from 2016 because when I put it in, when I put the disc in, I think it started playing a trailer for Independence Day Resurgence. I was like, uh, <laughs> oh no, oh no. Yeah, I, mean, I like having DVDs because I have like this old laptop with like yeah. what was it, like Windows Seven or something. Maybe. So if it's, if I'm like nostalgic or something, I just like put a DVD in there and it 
creates a unique experience, like I was saying. Yeah, I for yeah, years I, I would only buy a laptop if it had a disc tray in it, and then eventually yeah. I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I have to upgrade. <laughs> so unfortunately, I can't play DVDs or any sort of disc on my laptops. But like, Damn. I mean, I'm using them for editing anyway. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd rather watch my physical media on a bigger actual TV. You know, I mean, sometimes I do that, but sometimes I'm in bed, I'm lazy. Sure. You know? Well, my I, AC is really loud. <laughs> no, nah, I can barely hear it. So, but I, hey, it's humid. I get it. I mean, like, it's like right, it's like there's like a gap between me, my bed, and like the TV. My yeah. AC is like right between it. So, unless my volume on my TV is like a hundred, I'd say I can't hear it at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I can't, but like barely, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, but, yeah, but so are you going to keep this DVD? I assume. Oh, absolutely. Good. I'm glad. Look. <laughs> If I can take, if, if people can take one thing away from this episode, it's that go watch Independence Day. I think yeah. it's worth watching. Is it Brian? The, is Brian it the was best? almost gonna watch it. He yeah, should. he should. He should. I think this is wa- worth watching at least once. Whether you connect with oh, it, I like agree. I will, is up is up for debate. I'm and I would say if you like it, watch the sequel. But I think in this case, it's like if you like it or not, just don't watch the sequel. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, if you don't like it, watch the Nostalgia Critic video. You'll get a lot more out of that then. But yeah. <laughs> you can you can only find out if unless you tr- you can only try you can only try yeah so yeah speaking of Independence Day two oh, resurgence no. <laughs> uh, let's get into it Dana's you know let's talk I gotta about say one fact about this movie please this movie was so bad it got nominated a Razzie for worst picture which in my opinion it should have won by the way <laughs> <laughs> but you know what one instead that was so much worse Batman v Superman. Did Batman v Superman win the Razzie? It did for actually. Yeah, I think it actually won Worst Picture. Really? I'll check right now because I don't have the tab open, but I'm like 99 percent sure that's. I mean, amazing. I've never taken the Razzie seriously. Uh, look, oh, I, I'm I agree, so- but I'm like, God damn, yeah. that movie out of all movies. I'm someone who doesn't take the Oscar seriously, so you can you you so you would be <laughs> so yeah. I do not take the Razzie seriously <laughs> if I don't take the Oscar seriously. I'm pretty sure the Razzies nominated what the shining for worst picture it's like oh yeah i remember that i think i I think batman begins actually got like a razzie for something for what (laughs) i think it was like mag uh what's her name katie holmes yeah yeah because maggie gyllenhaal is in the dark knight yeah i got the two things (laughs) katie holmes was batman begins she's not bad she's not (laughs) fuck you razzies yeah (laughs) fuck you razzies look katie holmes is great in batman begins it's no dear dictator but (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Independence Day. Oh wait, no. I was. Oh. oh wait, sorry. I was wrong about the Razzie. Right. Worst picture was this. I don't know what this is. Hillary's America: The Secret. I was of gonna the- say. I was. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was like. I didn't necessarily believe you that BVS won worst. But it did win worst prequel, remake, revolver sequel. So there is that. I, again. Again. <laughs> BVS. Look. BVS is not a good movie. I don't like BVS. But compared to <laughs> Resurgence, we can agree it's both better. I mean, I would. I personally like the movie, but you know, I can I, see it's why people like. like pleasure. Yeah, I can see why people like. BBS. I don't think it's deep. I just think it's kind of cool. But yeah. <laughs> that's just me. Yeah. I'm in the minority here. No, I can see why people who like BVS like the BVS. <laughs> I don't like it, but I would rather rewatch yeah. it a hundred times over Resurgence. <laughs> Hillary's America, oh, I, I never watched, but I think that I think I remember that, that one winning. Like okay jokes aside i think that is actually like propaganda it, it has to be <laughs> I, yeah i think it's like one of those it probably is one of those like with a movie like that yeah. it has to be. yeah no reason, america you can't tell me that's not propaganda that, that just sounds like a movie nobody actually watched but like <laughs> it looked bad so nobody yeah. really cares it's like yeah it, it looks it's, like a, I, I think i remember it i didn't watch it because why the fuck would i <laughs> you know <laughs> I completely forgot it was a thing until I just looked it up just yeah, now. there you go. <laughs> that just shows you how cool the Razzies are, in that they're not <laughs> cool. So anyway, speaking of not cool, Independence Day Resurgence. <laughs> oh, God. Holy <laughs> shit, is this movie bad. Oh, my God. It's, they got everything wrong. <laughs> they got everything wrong. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I So I watched this once before. Obviously, a couple of years back, I think... I think it was because I rewatched Independence Day. It was 2020. I rewatched Independence Day on the 4th of July. And yeah. then maybe like a couple of days later, I was like, hey, I still have the DVD of Resurgence. Might as well watch <laughs> oh, it. No. And then I watched it. 
and I was <laughs> flabbergasted by how bad it was. And this was back in 2020 when I was nicer to movies. <laughs> oh, so was I, definitely. I think, yeah, uh, I, I think I when know. you're younger, you you tend to be a lot more forgiving <laughs> yeah. to movies, even to movies you oh, yeah. don't like. Especially because I was getting some movies. Well, yeah. I got into movies beforehand, but especially yeah. 2020, that was when the pandemic happened. That's right. why I was like really like, you, you had you, you had all the time in the world, so you could yeah. Do I learned how to pirate too. You know, I was yeah. like what fifteen or something. I right. could do whatever I wanted. Yeah. So so then you could, <laughs> so then yeah, we had all the time in the world, which means I could watch Independence Day Resurgence. So I was like, <laughs> please, for the love of God, please go, go back to normal. <laughs> if I'm watching Resurgence, so and it, it had been a couple of years since I'd seen it. I remember hating it a lot in the moment, and I was like, yeah. all right, is it as bad as I remember it? Oh, no, it's worse. It is <laughs> yeah. far worse than I had remembered. <laughs> oh, I agree. Holy Because when I first watched it, I'm like, it's it's obviously terrible. But I remember like some things, at least some things being slightly enjoyable. But this whole time, I don't even know. I think there was one time in the end where they mentioned Interstellar, which I just want to get that right out of the bat. Because I put in my notes of that movie. I took notes of this movie, yeah. sort of, anyway. Sort of. And on the positives list, I put, they mentioned Interstellar, and that's it. Yeah. I put nothing else there. That's the only positive <laughs> I have. They mentioned another movie that wasn't this. Yeah, because I know you're kind of like, I haven't watched the uh, Interstellar episode, but I remember, if I remember correctly, you're like iffy on it, sort of? I am very, yes, correct. I am iffy on Interstellar. I've seen it like two or three times, I'm pretty sure. sure. It's been years, but I feel like I would still love it. But uh point no, is, I think, better than this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I never hated I don't, Interstellar. Fuck, I know Silver's going to be like, ah, Interstellar has worse writing as, fuck you, Silver. Watch <laughs> this movie yourself, you coward. Watch it. I dare you. I double dare you. Watch this movie. Hey, Silver's lovely. And then tell me, tell me, Interstellar is worse please <laughs> please okay i'm sorry i gotta calm down okay it's go okay on. <laughs> anyway no i never hated interstellar i don't love it but yes i agree yeah. i would sooner I rewatch it first review, you're like you can see why it's divisive and, i can see why i can yeah. see why people like it but i also just don't necessarily connect with it that, that's you can basically see why it. people hate it that's for sure <laughs> sure yeah i can even see why people hate it i don't hate it either i, I i'm <laughs> yeah, playing you're the in the middle I, I, am, I, I get that i am the filthy centrist when it comes to interstellar but yeah. <laughs> with this movie no way man like i can <laughs> i will not i can understand why people hate it i probably hate it more than average i will never understand people who like it i have not seen anybody who likes it this feels ai generated honestly yeah it didn't yeah. feel like an emmerich film at all it's i think you said this too and i was gonna say this before but it sums it up so perfectly the first movie is like a 90s time capsule like you yes. know 90s filmmaking but yes. this is like tw- like modern hollywood filmmaking I'd this say. is the worst aspects of 2010 it's cinema. like they brought like it's like they went to the movie dude you know like an ai and they're like hmm. What movie was loved, like, I don't know, back in the 90s? What can we do a sequel towards? Oh, it, uh, Independence Day. Well, let's do it. You know, we'll get money. That made money. Yeah. We'll, well just make money. So it's interesting that you brought up earlier how Roland Emmerich made, made the claim that, oh, Marvel is ruining cinema. When <laughs> I watched Independence Day Resurgence, and I'm thinking, this feels <laughs> like Marvel in mind. Like, it's trying to replicate the Marvel style of filmmaking. Maybe that's why it feels like AI. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's so, so planned. So when you say AI, I agree because the CGI is obnoxious in this movie. It is so computer generated. Here's the thing. You can make a point that technically speaking, it might be better than the CGI of what? In the, like the first one? Nope. But here's the thing with that. Wait, really? I, well, I, I, pers- I hate the CGI here. I, I, I was, like, personally man. think it looks I mean? like, I personally think it looks ugly. Like, the oh, yeah, CGI like, in the original is not great, but there's personality even to then, it. Right? Let's say like even the CGI is better here. At least that one had like you know the miniatures and everything. Yeah. I don't know if there's even miniatures here. There's honestly. zero miniatures. It's all CGI. Yeah. It's all on a computer, and it looks, it looks ugly. Visually, the movie is so ugly. Visually, it looks like garbage. Yeah, it looks yeah. ugly. It, it yeah. looks like it looks worse than the worst marvel movies i can think of it looks ugly well you haven't seen quantum mania that's true i haven't seen quantum mania <laughs> but besides quantum mania the worst yeah. marvel movies that i've seen with the cgi this looks better <laughs> no this looks worse sorry <laughs> um it it looks ugly it is so ugly Very to look ugly. at 
that I'm wondering who would find this visually appealing. This is a no, movie. Right? <laughs> it's supposed to be visually appealing or visually yeah. distinct or visually I interesting. I know people are like, ah, style arguments, but it's like, I don't know, film's like a visual medium. Film is That's a visual medium. Important. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not <laughs> you going to have some good visuals, you can't just have dark. Yeah. What is this movie? Like dark blue or something? Oh, the or blues like, are so yeah. ugly, which is a shame because blue is my favorite color. And it's just, it's so, it's such ugly puke blue. I, I didn't even yeah. think puke blue is a real color because you can't it puke reminds out me a blue. Lot of, uh, have you seen, what's it called? Skylines or what's it called? Skyline or something? Skylines. I can't remember the name of it. I don't think. Is, I... is it called Skyline? I don't, let me check. Yeah. What if, it's yeah. like this 2010 movie. Uh, Skyline. Yeah, Skyline 2010. I've never heard of this. Really? I maybe. It was a movie made by the directors of uh, the second AVP movie, if that's anything to go by. Uh. But yeah, it reminds me a lot of that movie. Like, yeah, in who's in the movie, stuff. Skylines? Uh, a bunch of actors I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I see people here. What's it? E- Eric Balfour. Does anyone know this guy? <laughs> no, I don't know this guy. I have never heard of this Scotty movie. Thompson, David Zayers, Donald Feisen. Are you making up names? Daniel. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> These are the actual Is names. this AI generated? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was it's funny how like this year we've been talking about like ai and everything but i feel like i've never heard it's of it's been this. going on like much later than tw- uh 2024 it's I been mean, going since 2010 i mean so the whole <laughs> idea of hollywood reusing and recycling plots and characters and ideas in films has always been prevalent in criticizing oh, hollywood films yeah but i think now even back in like the late 2010s when computer when ai wasn't quite there but we but computers are obviously still being used i'm sure there was i remember be, listening on sardonicast and they would bring up like oh this movie is written by a computer as like a critique whereas like now i, I feel, feel one says that like as a yeah, critique i feel like sometimes. nowadays now that ai is where it's at that critique is is much more different because it theoretically could be written by a computer yeah i could be wrong but is it like have you seen wish by the way i don't know if you have i have seen wish the disney film okay right? because yeah. i heard that one was ai generated so I don't know if that's like a joke but i heard it is. so well the uh from what i remember the songs felt like they were ai generated oh okay i yeah. felt like the whole script was ai generated. i mean I, that says a lot about that movie yeah you know? i mean again i don't think it was necessarily ai generated but i can definitely you could definitely see the influence of kind of looking at the movie as sort of uh written by a computer written by statistics you know <laughs> that's that's basically when you look back at these movies, because you know AI was not there yet, but they were definitely written by committees and statistics. So there was that robotic yeah, yeah. feeling to a movie. Yeah, Whereas, yeah, yeah. Again, they now, just did like you know, like check off uh, check boxes. And yeah, check that. boxes exactly. So, uh, but yeah, no, but that's it's still it's still prevalent today because because well because AI is where it's at now. But <laughs> I can peaked. but I can definitely understand the criticisms being that this feels very robotic because it does again it feels like it was written by a committee written by statistics like oh how can we make this as successful it must be written by AI because i don't feel like a it ends of like emmerich in this movie (laughs) no definitely not no yeah you're absolutely right or like maybe someone like ghost directed it you know like uh i don't know what's like the most bland filmmaker possible uh pick Uh, one (laughs) pick any (laughs) um I don't know, Peyton Reed. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, Peyton yeah, Reed works. Yeah, why not? Yeah, if <laughs> if this was directed by Peyton Reed, yeah, you would not know the difference because it it is so I it is so it is so devoid of personality. Like um, say all you want about like some of his other films like Day After Tomorrow, 2012 and mm-hmm. whatnot. I feel like those are like they have some emmerich in them, you know? Yeah. Because at tell. least with 2012 there was that that idea of seeing these cities fall apart was actually really cool and i still think those those scenes hold up it's just the rest of the movie was god awful oh, because i remember that movie being so stupid oh it's so like stupid Moonfall, where i really liked it <laughs> no, yeah, in terms tw- of like how like silly it is yeah 2012 i remember watching quite a bit as a kid it's pretty long but i remember it from, like, like, it like the really library. entertaining for like, what it is yeah but then you get, return to it years later and you're just like oh this sucks hard <laughs> like really hard um, oh boy <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. Would you say it's, it's so fun? Terrible. I haven't checked your review of it. 
Uh, it's I don't remember. I don't. I've only watch seen it, it once, and I think that was back in 2020. Yeah, I. I, I just I. It was one of those movies I remember watching as a kid because I was obsessed with skyscrapers and buildings, and of course, seeing skyscrapers and buildings fall was really cool. So. <laughs> You know, that's probably why I gravitated towards watching 2012. And again, like I said, I thought it was kind of creepy where it's just like, is the world actually going to end in 2012? Because <laughs> some people actually thought that. And then oh, I, I remember this. Yeah, I remember. So well, I was young, but like I remember that being a huge I thing. remember because it was December 21st, 2012 was the predicted day as the end of the world. I was in I was a freshman mm-hmm. in high school. I remember going into school being like. Is the world gonna end? Like in the back of my mind, I don't think it was at the forefront of my mind, but I definitely had this underlying feeling like, oh, is it actually gonna end? And then of course I woke up December twenty second, twenty twelve, and it was just like, oh, it was bullshit. Which, yeah, duh, of course it was bullshit. I think even at the time I was like, there's no way. And then I woke up, I was like, oh, I yeah, feel like those type of rumors, like those type of rumors, have always been like. It, not always been around, but I feel like they've like popped up here and there. They've ever always since, been around. There, there's always, always conspiracy I feel like in 2019 theories. or 2018. They said something was going to happen. With yeah, like there's, there's or something. Well, there's but, always you know. conspiracy theorists or or folk tale folklore of you know that's where the 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 rumors of 2012 being the end of the world came from the Mayan calendar <laughs> because they had said like oh the, according to the Mayan calendar. The world's going to end. But it's like, okay, that is one culture from hundreds of years ago. And the reason it ended at 2012 is because they ran out of room to write on their calendar. Yeah. That's literally all. They had to be done writing it at 540. You yeah. Know. yeah, exactly. They, they, they ran out of room on the rock when they were writing on their calendar. That's literally why it said, like, oh, the end of the world. But then because they because it was such a popular phenomenon then roland emmerich was just like oh let me make a movie where yeah. the the movie where the, they actually do I mean, the world does actually his, end in 2012 to give him credit i give him credit i feel like if i were him i'd be like fuck yeah i'll make it i'll probably make a bunch of money from it i don't know if it did but i don't remember i know theoretically it probably could have i know but. resurgence didn't make a lot of money oh yeah it was like well, one of the biggest bombs well resurgence it had like a hundred and sixty million dollars, hundred and seventy million dollars, somewhere in that ballpark. It was like well over a hundred million dollar budget, which yeah. contrast that to seventy five million of the first movie. And yeah, this movie only made like three hundred million at the box office. I don't know if you said it, but I checked the budget. It's a hundred and sixty five million. Yeah. Like that, ninety million dollars more. Which is ludicrous because this <laughs> it does movie does not looks, show here. It, it does not No, it looks far worse than the original movie. It's like, you know, it's funny because that... I don't know if I took a note of this, but I saw in the trivia that it like they ran out of money for like three days. I'm pretty sure like production <laughs> and everything. like three or four days straight. They just had like no money whatsoever. How? Like, God damn. How do you run out of three uh, <laughs> yeah. million? How do you run out of it? it? What, what did you spend Was it, it on? Smith? Well, they couldn't uh, have because he didn't show I up. I looked on this article and it said that, according to Emmerich, that in middle production, it will opt it out because he wanted to do Suicide Squad instead, which, again, which say is what you hilarious. want about that movie. That movie is garbage. I'll admit that. I'll admit that movie is garbage. Yeah. But, well, everyone agrees. It's so but funny like it, because... The point is, it's definitely better than this. <laughs> yeah, no. I think I would rather rewatch Suicide Squad over this movie <laughs> because, yeah, I think that's funny. Like, that is one of the funniest facts about this movie is that Will Smith looked at both scripts and was just like, I see I see Suicide Squad as well, well worth my fairness, time. in you know, release the air cut. But seriously, though. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's probably going to be, like, a different film there. So maybe that, like, version that Ayer had was better than that. I don't know. But either way, both versions are better than this. Yeah, know? exactly. No, Suicide Squad had its moments where it was at least kind of comically bad, whereas this oh. is just... <laughs> This is just embarrassing. I remember also that like Emmerich was like, uh, this movie was kind of disappointing because it didn't have Will Smith. But I'm like, yeah, but you have Jeff Goldblum and, yeah. you know, and Bill Pullman. all these other actors returning and Judd the Hirsch. movie still sucks. So the like, movie what's still your sucks. point? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Independence Day worked because it was an ensemble cast. You had it, all it these different characters. Whereas Independence Day Resurgence. You can't just do that now. <laughs> yeah, you bring back the actors who are far much more older. They weren't meant to be like franchise material, if no. that makes sense. Well, know? that's the thing. That's why I'm saying this movie was made at a time when Marvel was the shit. So, oh, yeah. 
you have these that's right so you have this movie that reads like a marvel movie where you're just like oh we're bringing back these characters that everybody likes it's like it's no, not funny nobody either. cares nobody cares that jeff goldblum's back i don't even know any of these new characters honestly i don't know a single one of them i have no idea what their personalities are i know nothing they're like yeah. i'm gonna be honest it's because it's kind of funny because you mentioned self i think like a few days ago i think honestly they just pulled the cast from self like i feel like the characters <laughs> are the, the exact same they're both just like i don't know pilots or something yeah even that i don't even know <laughs> no exactly exactly you 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 nailed it pretty much kind of with stealth <laughs> i don't remember sort of. anything about stealth <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah. which is funny I that that was like that that, that was, was like what your first episode or something no that was episode seven it was one of your earlier ones. it was one of the early ones it was a solo episode the same day you watched it the same day i bought it <laughs> yeah which is funny. It was a blind buy and i'm yeah. like oh how gave this a one now okay oh yeah no because i <laughs> i watched it i think at and one you're point, like it's like really boring that's like one of the episodes i actually did watch yeah i, I, I <laughs> remember it being bad and i remember claiming oh this is the worst film i've talked about thus far <laughs> And so this was before Marmaduke sure? 22. This was before uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. This was before <laughs> A Good Day to Die Hard. I'm willing to say that Independence Day Resurgence now holds the title as the worst movie I've talked about thus yeah. far on the podcast. It's funny because the worst movie on Campy Cast, I was there for that episode. Yeah. Uh, was it last night? <laughs> now I'm here for that. And now, I don't know. I should have been on that Texas Chainsaw episode with uh, Xander. Yeah. So I could be there for Texas Chainsaw 3D. Well, Texas Chainsaw is some of the worst movies ever made. But anyway, oh <laughs> Resurgence. We got to keep it focused. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing to this movie. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's bad. It's, it's so, very, so bad. It's soulless. The acting is ab- terrible. Abhorrent. It's abhorrent. So I, it is so bad. Yeah, say what you will about the acting in the first movie. It's standard. Whereas the acting in this yeah. movie is, is so abhorrent. Bad. So the the woman who plays Patricia Whitmore, the the president's daughter. It's not the mm-hmm. same actor from the first one. The first one's actually Mae Whitman, who is mm-hmm. Katara in The Last Airbender <laughs> television series. Fun fact. Oh, television. I thought you meant the movie. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the movie. <laughs> we don't talk about that. No. Um, okay. No, but the... So this time, it's a different actress, and she sucks so bad. She is, like... I know all like the acting is, is all the acting is bad. All the acting is bad. The best actor is Jeff Goldblum. I'm like, what are you? What are yeah. you doing? I mean, Jeff Goldblum is just getting old, so you know, I get it. But I would <laughs> no. say the best actor, and I say that in very big quotation marks, best Can't actor choose. is probably Brent Spiner. And again, <laughs> I say that very lightly because he is not great. Um. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, no, the worst actress is easily fucking the president's daughter, Patricia. With even the pacing for this movie is bad because I remember DMing you this, watching this movie. I'm like, I'm like 30, 35 minutes in, yeah. and I'm waiting for this invasion to start because in the first movie, oh, dude. it starts up with that, and like yeah. the stakes are always there. But this, they just fuck around. They have yeah. like what some like terrorist group or something. I don't know. I it was so lame, and then like. I don't know. He gets like a vision. I, I don't fucking know. Yeah, no. The pacing in the I first 40 know. minutes compared to the, the pacing leading up to the actual invasion in this movie is yeah. far worse than the lead up in so the first one. So much worse. Because the aliens just kind of show up at one point. Yeah. Like randomly. Yeah. They they just show up. The, the, there's no build up to them. They just show <laughs> up. They land. And then that's it. And, th- and them landing is the quote unquote upgrade of the original explosion scenes in the original. So that's when they land the ship and the gravity is all fucky and all the cities are being leveled and you see these buildings flying all over the fucking place and they're landing into London. That's what like, so you have the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Fun fact. It's in, (laughs) it's in Dubai, also known as the Dubai tower. And it's, and it flies all the way to London for some reason because it gets <laughs> it gets lifted off the ground Not from the British people. Yeah, I, I don't know. But anyway, I guess they just wanted the visual of the Burj Khalifa, which is in Dubai, <laughs> landing in London. It's like, OK, I guess that's kind of cool, but it's not <laughs> like it, it. There's no weight to it. It you there's just no see cool scenes in this movie. I'm going to be honest. They try no. to recreate that scene from the first yeah. movie, but I'm like, 
it's it's not cool here. I'm sorry. Yeah. It just comes off as insulting. I know. You know? I, like I said, the Burj Khalifa crashes into London. It's like meh. You see the those the, there's like these there's these two towers in Singapore. I want to say that are connected by a bridge. Uh, you see those get lifted up and thrown into London. Hold on. Let me let me fact check this. I'm so, this movie was mostly white noise. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Okay, yes. The, it is very the Patronus Towers. Ooh, they're the wall oh. they're the world's tallest twin towers because <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> What? <laughs> well, a little something happened in two thousand one, so the world's tallest oh. twin towers. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're the world's tallest building they're the <laughs> My mind didn't even go to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean you should have, because remember in Independence Day when after everything's been exploded and then it, fa- it like fades in into New York City and the Statue of Liberty is oh, yeah. leaning down and right. you see in the background the Twin Towers are destroyed. You're just like, oh, oh, oh Tug's, oh, ta- Tug's <laughs> Collar. It's like, oh. Uh, but it's, it's it's amazing they didn't go to New York in this movie. They, 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 you, you saw what, how they rebuilt Washington, D.C., but you didn't see how they <laughs> rebuilt New York City. You're just like, hmm, <laughs> suspicious. Which, yeah. can I say... Off topic, speaking of Moonfall, when we were talking about Moonfall earlier, <laughs> there is a scene when the moon has entered Earth's atmosphere, and it's, caused, oh again, God. much like in this movie, the gravity is all fucky and <laughs> cities are being leveled. There is a you sp- talk about that movie, it drives me crazy. There's, <laughs> a scene, yeah. there's a scene, yeah, there's a scene, there's a shot where it shows New York City and all the buildings are being destroyed in New York City because of the moon's gravity, because of the moon entering mm-hmm. into the atmosphere of Earth. Yeah. For some reason... The World Trade Center doesn't get affected by the. Oh I have been God. thinking about this since I first saw the movie, where I was like, because <laughs> I remember being in the theater and it was like, you see New York City, you see the World Trade Center, and it's like, oh, all these buildings are being leveled. I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and then the scene ends suspiciously before you can see the World Trade Center being destroyed. I'm like, huh. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> interesting. I've thought about that just because, because it is, when, when I say World, when I see World Trade Center. Just- I'm yeah. talking about the Freedom Tower, like the one that the current one World Trade Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, I just thought that was interesting that in a movie post 9-11, <laughs> you don't see that building get destroyed. Hmm. Suspicious. I don't Fascinating. Because on one I hand, it it's like you want to be respectful. Yeah. But also if you like don't if you like, I don't know. It's if really you don't do funny about it. it. Like it's very distracting. The fact that this that all of New York City, all of these buildings are being destroyed but you just see the you just see the freedom tower standing unaffected it was really funny yeah. <laughs> i was just I like remember this, hmm. i remember like what was heavy play this is very unrelated but there was like this video game that came out i think a few weeks before 911 actually like exactly mm. right and Maybe. i think it was spider-man 2 for the ps1 right mm. and i think the last level or no something like that right I think it was like cra- like one of the levels was like crash flight and like one of the, like the final one was like top of the world. There was so much nine <laughs> eleven imagery there. Yeah. But then you know, like a few weeks later, nine eleven happened. Well, and so, it's like they had like yeah. severely censoring. <laughs> yeah, the the famous Spider Man nine eleven move uh, story I know is that one of the very first <laughs> teaser trailers is a helicopter gets caught in a spider web between yeah. the twin towers in like the first teaser for Spider Man. It's just like yeah. oh, Wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's like the it's yeah. the video game before that. Okay, yeah. okay. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, same thing. Isn't it amazing how we're going on all these tangents, avoiding talking about <laughs> independent <laughs> resurgence? Well, I don't know. This movie just has nothing to it. Yeah. I'm sorry, but no, like can I talk about everything is terrible. <laughs> let's talk about Brent Spiner a little bit because okay. for some reason he's back in this movie, <laughs> even though he so clearly died in the last one. <laughs> yeah. He's been in a coma for seventy three hundred days. They oh they God. they flat out say it. The guy, the doctor, his doctor friend. Ah, actually, he was fine. His doctor husband, because apparently he's gay now. Brent Spiner. Um, oh my God, Josh ruined him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so apparently that doctor friend of his was in the first movie. He was like his assistant that has like two lines, and they don't share any scenes. But no, in this movie, he's his husband. It's like oh, or boyfriend. It's like okay, that that was never established, but whatever like okay he's gay now whatever i just i just thought that was really funny it's that, all josh's fault yeah it's all josh's fault exactly <laughs> but so yeah he walks in and brent spiner's in a in a coma for 20 years 
But he says, like, you've been in a coma for 7,300 days. It's just like, who says that? Who talks like that? <laughs> who the fuck talks like this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, oh, it's so convenient. His introduction scene into a coma is when he gets out of the coma. He's just like, oh, <laughs> I've been asleep for 20 years. It's like, why? What, what is the point of bringing this character back? The movie called him. The movie wanted him. That's why. <laughs> I guess so. It's it's yeah. so stupid. I guess he said yes. Dave, wake up. You have a sequel to do. Yeah, exactly. Yes, dear. Yeah, it, it's so obnoxious. And then and then his doctor boyfriend dies. And the, the scene is played out really weirdly. First of all, the death. The tone in this movie is all over the place. It's too. all over I the just place. Forgot. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not fun. It's not a fun tone because because no, nobody's having fun with the role. Like I said, the fucking Patricia Whitmore actress is so boring and so bored. She does not want to be there. It's like, okay, I don't blame you, but could you act, please? <laughs> like that is your job, right? You act <laughs> for a living, right? Because <laughs> by watching this movie, you wouldn't know. But anyway. <laughs> Every actor treats death kind of as an inconvenience in this movie. Remember when Vivica A. Fox's character dies and yeah. and, and fucking A-Train's actor is just like, no. It's like, yeah. are you kidding me? <laughs> like, this is what... This, this is... feels like there's barely any stakes, which is weird. Because yeah. I guess, effectively, there are some like much later on. But I don't know. Well, it's so that's, really the thing, that, that's the thing I was always annoyed by in this movie is that it's bigger because it's just like, oh, it's a bigger mothership this time. Oh, it's... Bi- a b- oh, yeah, this typical sequel I just make the thing bigger. Yeah, but, you know, but that does not mean the sta- weight, you know? that does not mean the stakes are higher. So, like you yeah. said, yeah, there's no tension because, yeah, they're just doing the same thing all over these again. characters, I just don't give a fuck you about. You don't care, exactly. They're so boring. So, anyway, my grand point is that nobody cares when people die except brent spiner when his boyfriend dies and he's treating it like it's the worst thing in the world but then they're talking about really weird stuff where he's just like hey this scarf i was making you it was actually a sweater it's just like what 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 is this is this a death scene and then he just dies as if I'm supposed to feel bad for the doctor who got two lines in the first movie. Oh my movie. god, I, I love what movies do. They introduce a character in like five minutes, and then like 20 minutes later, they kill them off. I'm like, dude, you can't just do that. Yeah, I don't care. I, That's I, so rushed. I don't care. This is not if a it's character like a I feel slasher sad movie for. movie or something like that like doesn't care about the characters, sure. But sure. they're trying to make us care about the characters. Yeah, exactly. It is the one time anybody treats death as the worst thing ever and I and it's for a character I don't care about. It's like, are you kidding me? This is embarrassing. Um, I guess if there's one thing I can talk about the movie, one scene that please. stuck out to me, please. It's that scene where I think it's like I I honestly don't remember who said it honestly because these characters I just don't even know. Right, I'm gonna be honest. But uh, <laughs> point is though, I think it was one character that was like, I'm not saving the world, I'm saving you. I'm like, oh, oh that kind of defeats yeah. the point of. The- first sequence that's the sequence, bill pullman know. says that to his daughter yeah wait what bill pullman says that to his daughter i was like half paying attention that makes it even worse i know because yeah like you said in the speech he in his original speech from the original movie he's like we're all gonna band together work together yeah. and then in this movie it's yeah he says just fourth of july is a day we're all together we settle our differences you know yada, yeah yada, it's a yada. very iconic scene it's a very feel-good scene it's it's yeah. it gets you excited and yeah it's about working together <laughs> being unified to work to work as it, it's a very pro-humanity kind of stance it's not just it's not about being american it's about just being a genuinely good person and helping everybody out and then yeah in this movie he's just like i'm not saving the world i'm just saving you it's I'm just like, like what <laughs> what are you talking about are you are you high it's so fucked it's so I can't stupid. believe they character assassinated a character. Well, is it is character assassination extreme? I don't know. I mean, but it's definitely out of character. I'd it say. is very much out of character because, again, just because you bring back the same actors, maybe even the same writers, sometimes, but it, it doesn't they matter. Feel like they feel like shells of themselves. So, like they have like, and no they're not even movie. great. They're not even amazing characters to begin with. Like we said, we've not been calling them their character names. We've just been calling yeah. them Bill Pullman and Jeff Goldblum. They're not Goldblum. like franchise material. They're just right. like one spinoff movie. Plus. Every Art Emmerich movie, besides this one, actually, doesn't even have a sequel. So it's even more jarring. Yeah. Well, so we- in fairness, Godzilla 1998 was going to have, like, a whole franchise thing. But Godzilla's an IP, you know? Yeah. Emmerich didn't make him. But, like, right. there's no, like, 10,000 BC, too. I mean, <laughs> thank fucking God there is. But, you know? <laughs> there's no Stonewall 2, which, oh, my God. 
Yeah. I like, love really, but that movie sucks. Yeah, one, one of I don't know dramas. which one's worse, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but, it's funny because Stonewall came out a year before this. They're oh. both like his worst of his career, honestly. Especially yeah. Stonewall. Mid twenty tens was not the mid twenty tens was not kind to uh yeah. Roland Emmerich. Like he made this movie called what was it, Anonymous, which the movie itself isn't even the worst, but it's so fucking boring. Yeah. And then White House Down, it was kind of fun for a bit. And then, like, the last, the climax, I was just really bored with that, too. Yeah. I don't know why. That's so weird. Yeah. But, yeah. And no. then, does, he, does anyone even talk about Midway, though? Because, like, I forget to, that's a movie he made. I honestly. forget. I forget it, too. <laughs> I forget it, too. Have you even seen I don't no. even know. <laughs> no. I, I, I have not seen every single Emmerich film, to be fair. But Oh, but I I have. I saw Stonewall, oh, there you like go. I said before, uh, last week. Because I'm like, oh, that's the only movie of his I haven't seen. And. I regret that. <laughs> yeah, it was it like the gay movie or something? Yeah, it's it's like a pro gay movie, but here's the thing, it has those flamboyant gay stereotypes. So it's like stereotyping oh. these people, but it's trying to be like a pro gay movie and not only that, it is so pretentious. Oh. So it's trying to be pretentious along with those types. It is a dreadful experience. Yeah. It is painful. Which is funny because so Roland Emmerich is, Roland Emmerich is gay in real life. So I know, right? You, you'd think he but wouldn't. He made a movie that might have made me homophobic. You think he would <laughs> You'd think he would write a movie with well-written gay characters. But again, I know, right? In Independence Day Resurgence, he just recycles another character and just puts him with somebody he had zero chemistry <laughs> with in the first one. And he's just like, "Okay, they're gay now." It's like Yeah. And then you have Stonewall, which makes me question if he's even gay. In the first place. <laughs> Maybe he said that. So, like, if Ro- if like Roger Ebert were to criticize him, he'll be like, ah, his movie's not that bad. He's gay, right? But if he said he was straight, they'd be like, you know, hounding him. They would like ruin his career, is what I'm saying. Well, I'm not going to quote anything. I'm not going to claim. I'm not going to claim anything. But I'm just, just a theory. Just, I'm just, just saying, a theory. I'm just saying he's a shitty writer. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. But yeah, he used to not be the worst. No, he That's used to not be the worst. And then he <laughs> made Independence Day Resurgence. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, and God. And Stonewall. But yeah, so like I was saying, yeah, that was Bill Pullman <laughs> who said that. And then Bill Pullman sacrifices himself like Randy Quaid did in the first movie. Because he's just <laughs> like, hey, Mr. Alien, on the behalf of the American people, happy Fourth of July. And then he blows himself up. And then the alien <laughs> survives anyway. So it was like, oh, this was pointless. <laughs> great you killed off a likable character funny, from the first I actually one think, you know what's funny how this is hmm. gonna be really funny it was gonna be a third one go well, ahead laugh so <laughs> let's talk about the end oh, it, was based on, it was based on the success of this movie well so but let's this movie did do well let's go talk ahead. about let's talk about the very ending yes so they it, win through bullshit because again it, oh. it's stupid <laughs> oh, again no. they win through bullshit because remember the the, the, the aliens did not did not upgrade their tech at all in those 20 years i guess so yeah because because they even have a character say like oh they haven't upgraded in 20 years it's like oh, oh my god it no reminds me of what, uh, what was it unrelated it's i wonder if they still use windows xp because i remember the source code for that got leaked maybe that's what they use maybe maybe, maybe you know <laughs> but yeah so anyway they win they save the day uh and so then the aliens leave and so then they're just like oh Oh, because they have that weird robot character that flies in. That I forgot, I forgot about yeah. him entirely. <laughs> yeah, remember that robot character comes in. They shoot at them because they don't make it obvious that they're not the aliens from the first movie, but they still <laughs> shoot them anyway. And then they're just like, "You shot at me." It's like, okay, you made no indication that you were a different <laughs> race of aliens. So like, this is on you, dude. Alien racism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, they're still willing to help the Earthlings, and they're just like, "Hey." We know where they're going. Let's go fight them. And then, yeah, all the characters are just like, we're going to take the fight to them. And then it ends on Brent Spiner going, we are going to kick some oh, major no. alien ass. Oh, no. <laughs> it is. So this is why I said, like, uh, this is a very Marvel feeling movie because that because yeah. it's it's doing this 2010s thing. Does it have a post credit scene like a Marvel no, movie? It, I, no, it once doesn't. It, once but, it hit the credits, I just ended it. I just I deleted think, the file. I, think I pirated it, this. I just stopped. Yeah, I think what happens is I think what happened was because it's um because they probably weren't that confident in it that they were probably <laughs> saving 
they were probably saving that for a post credit scene, but they're like, I don't think anybody's going to be in the theater by then. So let's put it at the very end. I'm sure. I thought they were pretty confident. I don't I think, know. Like, they wanted to like make back its budget. I don't know. No. I feel like they were confident at first. When but even just then, like, I'm going to read this quote from uh, Emery. He oh, said, I should have stopped making the movie because we had a much better script, but then he had to cobble up together another script. He should have just said no, but you know, he continued oh. anyways. So deep down, I think he wanted to stop, but yeah. then he just couldn't. So but then the... it was, when he hated it, it was too late. Yeah, exactly. But again, the fact that they're, they're setting up a sequel, they're so confident in setting up a sequel. <laughs> again, like I said, they do this very 2010s thing where they just blatantly put... The thing is, right? A, they put a like the blatant first... sequel bait yeah. at the end because mm-hmm. Marvel does this all the time. A lot of movies do this all the time. Yeah. Like, you know, back in the day when you had movies end and they would have kind of a sort of like at the end of star wars the end of the original star wars the one from 1977 Mm -hmm. there's that one shot of darth vader like flying in space and he's spinning around in space and then his ship gets all better and then he flies normally there's that one shot of the of the tie fighter flying normally it's like okay that is the one like open-ended thing you could leave for a sequel you but the rest of the movie just ends normally you don't have to see anything more but mm-hmm. there's that one shot of the TIE fighter flying away where you're just like, okay, maybe a sequel can happen. And obviously yeah. it's, a, it's a cool little thing. Yeah. History. And then, and then the rest is history. Whereas, yeah. <laughs> whereas in, in modern times you have these really blatant like setups where the movie is almost, where the movie's almost straight up saying to the audience, see, we're, we're making this so obvious. You have to see what happens next because we're making it yeah, so yeah. obvious that the studios have the to thing, greenlight right? it. Sometimes if I watch a Marvel movie, it'll end, but there's like 20 minutes left. I'm like, okay, that's not 20 minutes of credits. Don't fuck with me, movie. I know yeah. there's like something there. Do you remember the ending of the Art- Artemis Fowl movie where they uh, blatantly make I don't it. think so, no. <laughs> they make it so bla- – it's the same thing as here where they're making it so blatant that they want a sequel that they're just like, oh, you have to make – you have to greenlight a sequel. We're making it so obvious. But it's like mm-hmm. that has nothing to do with it. If you don't make back <laughs> your budget, the studio is just going to be like, you're shit out of luck, dude. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, after Brent Spiner – It's just Spiner, funny in retrospect. It's so funny in retrospect seeing Brent Spiner being like, we're going to kick some serious alien ass. It cuts to black. And that is that is the extent we'll ever get to Independence yeah. Day. Like we will never ever get a sequel because it, not only did it not make its budget back, it is so terrible. I do not want yeah. to see a sequel. So, yeah, I, have I to- ever told you my crackhead theory about Moonfall and Independence Day three? I don't think so. So I might have m- mentioned this in my Moonfall I, review I, years well, ago. Well, you said in that review, you said something like it's a better Independence Day two than Independence well, yeah. Day so two. in my video, oh, that's kind of it. In my video review, I had this crackhead theory where I think they had some like concepts already set up for Independence Day three. Again, they ended so blatantly so. obvious. There's actually that they a book on this movie. Funnily enough, really. So if anyone watching this wants to get, it's called "The Art and Making of Independence Day Resurgence." It is twenty dollars on Amazon hardcover. There's only two left, so if you really want to know the lore, the history of Independence Day too, well, there you go. If you, you know want to do that for some uh, reason, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, so basically, what I was going to say is, so I think they had some concepts. They didn't have a script ready, but they had something. Yeah. That they had like ideas that they wanted to explore in original Independence ideas. Day Three, original. <laughs> but because Independence Day Two was so ass. <laughs> that no studio would have picked it up that they were just like, you yeah. know what, let's just scrap it. We're not going to do it. But then Roland Emmerich was just like, eh, but there's some of these really cool ideas I want to explore in a movie. So then he put all these ex- ideas into Moonfall. And that's what I think Moonfall is. Moonfall is the table scraps of what would have been Independence Day 3. That is my crackhead theory. Yeah. I have zero evidence to go off yeah. of that, but that is my wrong, head kind of. I kind of skimmed on the trivia, but apparently there's like Independence Day books or something. Hmm. I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure I said I saw somewhere that, like, not bullshit, not the uh, the making of Independence Day research. Right. Like, so actually, actually like, like like canon novels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like yeah, like this, like Star Wars novels. Like, I just, in my opinion, see, here's the thing with this being like a franchise. I feel like if you make like more than one, the novelty kind of worn off because you know, absolutely. I love the first one, but Me like too. you know, you can't just make. The same movie, you know, oh, yeah. Aliens on uh, 4th of July. You know, it's going to wear off its novelty yeah, really quickly. Yeah, you can't just well, continue at least it's like a books. series. So, like, if you want, sure. if you really want to, you yeah. can do that. Well, but it's so, not like, 
I, I have an example of this. So obviously, for people who know me, my favorite film of all time is The Dark Crystal. I haven't um, seen it, surprisingly. It's really good. I really recommend it. But it, I am biased. But anyway, there's comics and books that explore other that explore further into the universe of the dark crystal that mm-hmm. I've never really been interested in reading, even though I love the movie so much with all my heart, I've never really been interested in checking out those books or comics right away <laughs> because one of the reasons I fell in love with the dark crystal is because of the visuals, because of the fact that all these pup, all these advanced fairness, puppetry, I- I feel like a movie that's visually appealing, like as a movie, would be good for like a comic or something. Sure, but I don't know. Those designs, as cool as they are, are really cool because of them being puppets, and so Mm -hmm. they look cool drawn, but they don't have the same oomph as if they were actually there. Which is why, when the prequel series was being made, one of the reasons I love that series is because they actually use puppets. Yes, they use CGI, and I, but I was okay with it because, much like Independence Day, it was a mixture of both practical and CGI effects. So the both effects were able to work together, and so that's why I like the prequel series. But like, I'm not as interested in checking out the books or the comics. So again, same idea. I love the original Independence Day with all my heart, but I don't care enough to further spend my time reading books and novels and other yeah, lore there, bits. I just looked up. There's about like five comics. So I'm going to go through them real quick. There's the first, the one based on the first movie, which yeah. we all know about. And sure. then there's one called silent zero, which came out in 98 and it was so bad. It got nominated a Razzie for worst book. R- R- but, really uh, comic Razzie. Wow. I didn't know no. that existed, <laughs> but in, but in seriousness, so it, I think it's a prequel because it's set in the late 1960s and early seventies. Okay. And then there's war in the desert, which is, which came out in 99. Okay. And then there's crucible, which I guess brings the events of uh, the first movie and uh, the sequel. I guess it connects the two get together. And then there's a uh, resurgence, which is just based on the movie. We unfortunately watched. <laughs> right. Yeah. Again, I don't care. Like I would sooner (laughs) actually read those dark crystal comics than actually what, than actually read any of these. It's kind of interesting. At least the prequel one anyways, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, you don't need them to watch either movie. Listen, I I have spent years, years seeing my favorite movie. One of my favorite movies of all time, star Wars being ripped to shreds through constantly being, having content pumped out, with just the it, with its similar name on it like just slapping star wars onto uh, yeah. whatever garbage you want to disney wants to pump i get out. it yeah so oh maybe read the book you know <laughs> sure but that's what i'm saying is like i am not interested in something just because it shares a similar name to something i love oh, i am yeah, i don't care i really don't <laughs> so oh, what you're not gonna watch our uh what's it called Acolyte, Acolyte or something? Yeah. yeah. I, I, watched, I almost said it wrong. God damn it. <laughs> I watched the Red Letter Media review on it. I was like, I'm so glad I didn't care enough to watch it. Uh, I remember, it. Uh, what was it? I was, I was having a walk and like sober. The first thing he said was like, dude, look at what was posted in no mic chat. And it was about like that lesbian force wish, witch thing. I'm like, what? What, what is going on? I don't know. I just, it, it looks... sounds like I'm joking, but no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I've seen the lesbian witch thing. It's like, I. Yeah. Look, it's no worse than what I've already seen. I'm convinced, like a writer's, like some some writing there had like have. Wait, I'm I can't fucking talk, but uh, a writer had like a fetish there, and they just want to incorporate that. Like <laughs> for, that has to for be lesbian going, like, space witches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it has to be the explanation for that, because like who just writes that? It it looks look especially when ironic. Wait, never mind. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Uh, I'm just gonna say it looks no worse than what we've already been getting. So that's probably why I don't care as much. But I'm just saying. I care very little to check out the acolyte. Why would I? Like, what? I know. Right? What am I gonna get out of it that's going to <laughs> satisfy me as a Star Wars fan or impress me more than what the originals succeeded at? You know? Yeah. Like, what? Wh- what like, is the point? Watching a movie is one thing, but when it comes to like shows, they make yeah. thirty minutes feel like an eternity. Dude, and that's, that's why. Kind of that's why I gave yeah. up on those Marvel shows. That's why I never I remember, watched She-Hulk. I never bothered it's funny, with She-Hulk because I remember when Mandalorian was like new, right? This was like yeah. late twenty nineteen or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. was back when I didn't even know people thought it was bad. I remember <laughs> when I was trying to first watch that first episode. Yeah, the pacing was kind of killing me. Maybe because yeah. I was in school, but I remember mean, even back then I just wasn't on board. Obviously. Yeah, I I've given up on trying to <laughs> just 
catch up. And then I hear it gets even worse. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Especially now. (laughs) Especially now. It's like, you know, do I really care? It's like, no, I don't. I don't. So. I'm surprised people care, but I know that sounds very like I don't know. Cynical, elitist. But I'm just surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I, I just I'll, don't see the appeal. I'll be elitist. I don't see the appeal. I don't care. Look, if you're somebody out there who likes it, good for you. I don't yeah. care. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your, enjoy your Star Wars shows. I'll enjoy the <laughs> enjoy original. Book of Boba Fett. I don't en- care, man. Enjoy I the Book care. of Boba Fett. I'm gonna enjoy the original trilogy I heard because like, I actually uh, what like. What was those. it? Ahsoka. You know, go yeah. ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. As long as you don't like Resurgence. Resurgence is terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does anyone like this movie? I don't even no. know. A no, lot of people, I think not. even a, a certain person that hates Godzilla 1998, even he says that's like the worst of his movie. I've never met anybody who likes Independence Day Resurgence. And I hope I'm, I'm looking at my letterbox right now and like almost no one likes it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at my good. ratings. Good. It's mostly just one star and half star. Yeah, yeah. no, that good. It's it's bad. I hate this movie. It is. It, it, I will say that it is. It is absolutely the worst film we've talked about thus far on the podcast. It is. I'm it flattered. Is yeah. No. C- congratulations, Dana. <laughs> I got to find a movie worse than uh, Stealth. I'm. I'm yeah. so proud. Yeah. Worse than Stealth. Worse than Rob Zombie's <laughs> okay. Halloween Two. Worse than. Is Marmy it worse than Leatherface? Oh well, Leatherface. <laughs> oh wait, you didn't cover. Wait, my bad. I thought you were. Uh... I thought you covered those movies, but no, you didn't. That was like, I have watched all the Texas Chainsaw movies. Leatherface, oh, I've seen them too, but I've yeah. seen most like Leatherface ones. I hated, but the <laughs> Texas Chainsaw movie I hated the most was Texas Chainsaw 3D. Like, that oh, was the one God. I hated the most. That one was a bit. It's funny because I know a lot of people hate I don't know. Because I haven't seen it in years. I remember, like, I think I, if I remember correctly, I thought Leatherface was worse than that. But again, uh, it's been so long since I've seen either. I was probably binging that franchise. I mean, Leatherface, don't get me wrong. Leatherface was bad. Like, it was really, oh, really yeah. bad. I just bring up Leatherface because it's a bit that goes on yeah. in Harry, where I'm like, Leatherface is great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, look. It's not that bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, let I guess to end off Resurgence, because unlo- do we really have anything else to say about it? Uh, I'll look on trivia. I don't have much, but I'm sure I have something. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. I got rid of the DVD four years ago. <laughs> I have no reason to bring it back to the podcast. I have no reason to ever watch this movie ever again. I know. I only did because of this. <laughs> yeah, I did because of this, too. But now that, now that I have a video I made on Independence Day Resurgence, which is four years old and... I basically made it, it an excuse. To, well, I made it. It was basically a, a weak excuse for me to talk about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because I was kind of obsessed <laughs> with it at the time. But <laughs> yeah, so it was it was a weird Independence Day Resurgence review that just turned into me talking <laughs> about Jojo. But and, but we talked about other stuff, too. So, yeah. you know, in nature, it's kind of similar. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, we, we avoided talking about it in this, which if you've seen it, I got, fair, yeah. you know, that's fair. So I'll bring up two things, right? So okay. I'll read this first part. So soon after the success of the first film, Dean Devlin, or no, 20, uh, Fox paid Dean Devlin a large sum of money to write a script for the sequel, which I guess eventually happened. But after completing the script, Devlin actually had a brain cell and didn't turn the script and instead just gave the money back. So he was sparing us for a few years because I almost <laughs> could have gotten this earlier. As he felt the story didn't live up to the first film, which, again, true, it was approximately Correct. until 15 years later that Devil met up with Roland Emmerich to try again, found out they've cracked the story for a sequel. Are you sure? <laughs> Are we sure about that? No. They I don't just, think so. They were just like, hey, man, we're they desperate just, for like, money. They just back the money. <laughs> yeah. They were just like, hey, man, let's we're desperate for money. Let's redo the first <laughs> one. It's like, okay. And then they did so worse. Yeah. And they're going to have other titles for this movie, which include... Independence Day Rises, oh. Independence oh. Day Returns, oh. Independence Day, Day Retaliation. And, okay, this is this is my favorite one. Independence Day Requiem. What Requiem? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what Requiem? What? what does that mean? Look, Resurgence is dog shit. Is a dog shit subtitle, but like, oh, those are worse. I think honestly, if this movie had Independence Day Requiem like as the title, maybe maybe I'd consider giving it one star. Then, but as is, no. Then then <laughs> no. then my then my video where I talk about JoJo makes a little bit more sense, I guess. <laughs> um, 
actually, I guess one other thing I wanted to talk about. Oh my about. god, you just reminded me. I didn't oh. fix uh, my ranking because I Independence Day above 10,000 BC. I gotta fix that now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta fix that. Yeah, exactly. But the question is, is it worse than Stonewall? I genuinely can't tell. Mm. I genuinely can't fucking tell. Yeah. They're both terrible, but for different reasons, honestly. Yeah. This is lazy, but Stonefall is just more painful in a sense. Sure. I, I get that. I can see oh, that because because like Stonewall to me sounds like it's trying to be a serious drama yeah, from the director so of Independence painful. Day. So I <laughs> yeah. feel like that'd be far more insulting. Whenever he makes films that are kind of like I know this kind of again sounds a bit elitist, but whenever you make something that just isn't a disaster movie, he doesn't really. I mean, besides the Patriot, maybe Stargate if you want to count that. They're not exactly bangers, you know what I mean? Right. So like, I don't know. Right. Exactly. It's just yeah. No, that just sounds in bad taste. So yeah, <laughs> I the actually something I wanted to bring up is I remember finding uh, this movie that was made by I'm pretty sure it was made by Asylum. If not, it was made by an Asylum like studio that just makes rip off mm-hmm. films of very oh, popular yeah. films that are out at the time. It was like a Billy Mock Yeah, Mo- it was a mockbuster, <laughs> and so it was a mockbuster that was trying to cash in on the success of independence day resurgence and it was called like independent wars or independence wars <laughs> or something like that, that sounds like a mobile game yeah no it had like a very mobile game sounding title to it let me see if i, I can bet the poster is like a mobile game <laughs> let me see if i can find it uh on letterboxd uh okay on letterboxd it's called interstellar wars oh God, i remember this and then one of the, and oh the alternate God, how, how, i found to watch that with some movie dude i remember this because we both love into well he doesn't love interstellar right now because he's a coward right <laughs> but back then we both loved it and we were like oh my god it's a movie we should have an interstellar wars watch party we never did it but no well, i might so, even have the file still downloaded so obviously. i found it through voodoo it was under independence wars insurgents and that <laughs> blew my mind and i'm just like the fact that they're trying to cash in on independence day resurgence of all movies it's like why what what are you trying you're trying to trick all the grandmas who are going to watch independence day resurgence it's yeah it, it blew my mind that somebody actually thought that Some was of those are just so funny that's in, insane to me that somebody thought that was a good idea anyway <laughs> but yeah i still have interstellar war still downloaded actually i still have the uh, <laughs> file right here december 28th 2022 nice <laughs> i'm ready to watch it whatever <laughs> you should watch it after uh recording <laughs> oh my god i should i really should yeah maybe but... i'll like I'll, maybe i'll dm some movie and be like hey remember that one movie we agreed on can we do that <laughs> i mean he's he doesn't have a job he I would say he doesn't have a life, but that's kind of mean. But yeah, no. <laughs> he's probably not too busy. It's the summertime. He'll yeah. watch it. Yeah, it's why okay. not? Of course. So, <laughs> yeah. well, then, before we wrap up, then, yeah. uh, I almost called you the movie, dude. <laughs> I'm Danis. offended. What the fuck? <laughs> Danis. Yeah. Uh, shout out your stuff, dude. Where can people find you? Uh, So, I only have, like, three socials. I don't have a lot, but, you know, I'm pretty active on the stuff I have. I have Letterbox, obviously. I have Backlog, too, which I use not as much as uh, Letterbox, but, you know, I still quite a lot, which that's my dayness. I think on Letterbox it was, like, Nightness X, which is a cringe username. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I forgot because I think I was going to, like, change it to something else, but now I can't. I mean, I could, but come on. It's iconic. Yeah, of course. But the yeah. uh, point is I also have ser- Serialized, I think it's called. But the, I almost the, never watch shows there. The so, I mean, you can follow. Yeah, the, te- the television show one that Brian got yeah, banned which, on. That sh- that, yeah, that show. Not, I almost called it a show. <laughs> that site is just dog shit, by the way. I just want to say. Yeah. Anyone who, like, promotes serialized propaganda, don't trust him. Yeah. I know Josh loves it. <laughs> don't trust him. A Critic loves it. Don't trust him. Silver <laughs> hates it. He's kind of base. I'm calling out all of you motherfuckers that are promoting shows. What pissed me off is that. Again, I'm not going to say names, but there are people that are, um, have you heard of like the Sheep and Perry server? I don't want to give out names because I feel like it'd be kind of mean, but there uh-huh. are sheeple in Perry server, right? Uh-huh. And they're pretending to be into these shows when I'm like, you're clearly not. Uh-huh. Fuck off. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't fall for that, right? But uh, point is, though, I have it, but I barely use it. Okay. Which, it's not even that I don't want to watch shows. I kind of do. It's just yeah. that site is dog shit that it actively... 
I me can't, away from watching shows. I, I can't. You know? I can't log TV shows the same way I log movies because I'm currently. Well, yeah, I'm currently watching through The West Wing. It's a really good show, <laughs> yeah. but I would not log it the same way I log a movie. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just watching. And it. I love Letterbox a lot, but like yeah. that, like I have issues with Letterbox, but they're oh, very minute. Too. Yeah, like that whole algorithm change. That's like mm. you know, I was upset in the moment, but I'm like, that was yeah. a year ago. Who gives a shit? You yeah, know exactly, exactly. But besides that, I really love the site. It's better than IMDb, which <laughs> I used to use beforehand. IMDb, I have I ever told my IMDb story on the podcast? I don't think so so i tried getting into imdb i tried getting into imdb and uh, i'll just tell this quick story and then we'll wrap up so i tried to get into imdb i want to say early to mid 2018 Mm -hmm. and one of the first things i wrote was a review for infinity war because i just watched it and so then i wrote it and i posted it and then i think i tried logging back into imdb after that and I couldn't. Oh, I used uh, what was it logged by like Google or something? I don't, I don't know, I don't know, know what happened. Crazy. But like, no matter how so many, weird. how many different ways I tried to log back in, it logged, it it locked me out of my account. So I was like, Did you ever shit. request like a password change? I don't what know. Changed? I don't know what happened. But I you never tried after this. <laughs> so, but basically, what ended up happening is now there's just a single Infinity War review from me. Somewhere in IMDb, it's somewhere like, in the what, depth, is it like a ten or something. When it I, came I might have given it a six out of ten. I don't remember. But really? I don't. I don't remember I what thought, I wrote. I thought the hype would have gotten to you, or like, like it did for like I don't know a lot of people. I feel like no. This was remember. This was a post Last Jedi world. I was really depressed with Disney after Last Jedi. Uh, so okay. I was not. Well, I saw. I saw that in theaters too, but yeah. I didn't care about Star Wars. I was thirteen. Yeah. And that movie is like what two and a half hours. Yeah. I was just dreadfully, and I mean dreadfully bored. Which yeah. I know off topic. But, you know, no, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. So I, I, war, I was not. I try, I tried, I tried l- getting into IMDb, and they promptly kicked me out because they wouldn't, I, for whatever reason, they locked me out of my account. No matter what password they <laughs> used. You gave it a used. six out of ten. How dare you? Yeah, ex- <laughs> I guess so. And so, yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah. so. And so then you gave Interstellar, or not? I almost said Interstellar, <laughs> Infinity War, a six. Yeah. So then a couple <laughs> months later, in December of 2018, I watched Spider Verse. I decided to try out Letterboxd, and the rest is history. So really, yeah. I thought you, I thought you got Letterboxd in uh, 2019. Well, I see, so like, I see your oldest logs going back. Yeah, my oldest logs that. go back to like March of 2019, but I started yeah. using the site in December of 2018. I just okay, deleted yeah. a lot of those early reviews because I either oh, found them. Oh come friend. on! Don't be I like know. some movie dude. Don't I know. delete. I know. I have, I have not deleted a single review since. So oh, what was it? My Titan review or something? Israel. Uh, looked at it it was from like 2021 and Instagram yeah. was like you would not talk like this today <laughs> <laughs> like i talk entirely different now yeah. i'm possibly more unhinged than back then i swear sure, sure. <laughs> so well anyway all your links will be in the description below danis mm-hmm. so thank you well thank you dude for coming on today to talk about oh, independence no day and independence yeah. day resurgence uh, it's been a while since i've been on the podcast i was scared i was gonna be like lame and boring no like, just this... not saying it but no it's fine no you were lovely I've, every guest <laughs> i've ever had is lovely i love okay. all my guests they're all good <laughs> that's good that's good so all right well yeah thanks for coming on and uh You're yeah welcome. i think that's gonna do it so yeah all right everybody uh happy Wait, can i say one more one more thing. Uh, say your one more thing before I say my one more thing. Okay. So remember what I was talking about earlier? If Shafe watches the podcast, can I please leave one message for him? Uh, leave a message for James, sure. So this is going to be the only time I'm doing this. And everyone <laughs> agrees it's a great idea. So James, if you're listening, just just please uh, raise Revenge of the Fallen or else you don't want to know what else, but I promise you people won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, James. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Happy episode 99 of Too Many Movies. We'll see you guys next time for episode 100. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, hell yeah. Bye. Bye.